Yeah. Would you plank? Uh, I still don't know what that means. I thought that was a sex thing. It's like Prince William likes getting planked. I thought that was a phrase. <laughs> this also reminds me of what he didn't realize. Oh, this was bad. I thought Harambe died of natural causes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Uh, welcome to another episode of Trash Taste. Uh, I'm joined once again by the boys, Jerry Gone, and a returning guest. Familiar face, Pete. It's Peter. It's Pete. Hey guys, nice. Hey Thanks for having me back. I no, appreciate it's it. Pleasure. No worries. Pleasure. Are you Not, wearing the same thing you were last slightly time? Slightly different. New okay. scarf and a new sweater. Oh. The same color combinations. Oh. <laughs> Consistency is key. <cute. laughs> that way, this are you, one, are you like that one one clip that you're like, you only need like five suits in your life. Yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely that guy. I feel like if I consistently wear similar things, it'll look like one big great episode over all the days. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you were voted for episode of the year at the Trash. Oh, yeah, congratulations yeah, on your, your yeah, win. That's for uh, many of very the, humbling. I yeah. I'm concerned that I got the the biggest giga chad. I had to look up what that meant. And then <laughs> well, I, it was, I think it was because you told the kid to, to kill themselves. I did not say to kill themselves. <laughs> I assisted said them <laughs> with a dodgeball, but it's very different. Okay. But like, yeah, Giga Chad is something that if you knew me growing up uh, from ages one to 35, you would never apply that term to describe me. But I, I take it. I'll take those Ws. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. you been uh, since last time? It's been how many months now? Since it's been, been a- 10. So almost I think it was almost 10. A year. Yeah. yeah. It's been good. I've um, I've done so many things since retiring from teaching, which yeah. was kind of the point of the last episode. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Congrats, yeah. congrats. Traveled the world and saw Paris twice. I I'm so sorry. It. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sorry anymore. We were, we're, we're notorious French haters on this podcast. Well, sorry, France. the Parisians have a friend in me because I thought it was excellent. But, but I will say my mm. favorite parts of being in Paris was eating outside or having, you know, a beer, um, like mm. overlooking and watching people. And everyone says, that's just a worse Italy. <laughs> I said, okay, well, I haven't been to been, Italy. They're not wrong. Well, I thought it was cool. And I it's like, generally like a very European thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Out, outdoors in summer, especially. And I think yeah. TwitchCon is normally, EU is in summer, right? Uh, yes, it was. Yeah, so it's like we, very, yeah. very common. Yeah. Mm. Well, I loved Paris. I like how they have the uniformity of the building codes. It makes for a nice night walk. And the, the lighting at night in Paris is undefeated. Is this your first time in Europe? Yes. Okay, okay. And I haven't visited anywhere else. <laughs> okay, you went to the, well, <laughs> well, you went to the UK, which is on the continent of Europe. No. Yeah, but you guys didn't want to be a part of it. So it's like- Hey, I, I, hey don't, don't blame you know, me. I'm just saying. I, I, mainland Europe, I've only been to one place. So <laughs> mainland Europe. <laughs> he was still in Europe. <laughs> I mean, the, the greater- <laughs> but, Yeah, but I mean, it, it was, it was fun, you ate good food, presumably. You had, I'm, I'm yeah. almost jealous you had a good time in Paris. It was great, yeah. both yeah. times. Yeah, so damn. you went twice? Once was for recreation, just for, you know, just just on my own. The second was for TwitchCon. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, this past year has been a whole different world of getting to collaborate with others and do adventures that were otherwise unavailable to me yeah. due mm-hmm. to a teaching schedule. Mm. So I've been a lucky guy this past year. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. it's been great. Mm. Good yeah, stuff. It mm. seems like you've definitely kind of like do, uh, like dove straight head first into quitting teaching and the going, creator life and going into like the creator life. We're so sorry. That's uh, yeah, you're what a mistake. one of us now. Yeah, my, my mother was so proud of me. And uh, now she's like, you talk on camera. And I'm like, yeah, mom, it's amazing. She's like, I don't like watching it. I go, all right. So, Your mom doesn't say that. No, she can't figure out what Twitch is yet. Yeah. So I've sent to the Your mom, my parents, I've sent it to them like five times. I think it took like maybe the 10th attempt for them to finally like actually click it and, and figure out what Twitch was. Well, but it was different from YouTube. It's yeah. very different. And my mom, she's 73, God bless her. And she chose the name Gypsy Girl 5057. <laughs> and uh, and so now people, when she she's a in there <laughs> typing, I can see chatters being like, what's up Gypsy Girl? I was like, don't talk to my mom like that. <laughs> <laughs> she's not a Gypsy Girl. She's not- Why she's did a, she choose Gypsy I Girl? I don't know. She's just really in tune with like that kind of whole traveling and kind yeah. of, I don't know what, that's what she chose. Okay, and, right. uh, but she, she could have just chosen. Well, something. she's got to. She's got to change her username now that you just said that on camera. Well, she's not there enough, so it's okay. <laughs> no, she's not. She's not there enough. Wait, she, next time though, you're streaming and she's in the chat. Everyone's gonna be like, "Hey yo, hey, yo she's yo. mom. He's I'd, mom." I'd rather it be out that so now no one can hit on her or talk to her differently. <laughs> so. Just leave her alone. Uh, Damn it. Yes, I was most certainly gonna hit on Gypsy Girl. Fifty-fifty-seven. Yeah, you gotta get it right. You have to. Sorry. So. 
But yeah, it's cool to for my family to not understand what I'm doing. It's mm. kind of awesome. So I don't know. It's kind of nice though when they're like, "You do what?" And you're like, "Yeah, it's kind of weird, but it's fun." I it like, is. Fun. I, I kind yeah. of like the almost. You know, you're kind of carving your own the kind of way. Yeah, yeah. 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 Very satisfying for sure. The only tricky part, and maybe you guys can relate to this, given some of the topics that you've discussed on this channel, to have like close family members, like your your mom's sisters or something. And then they watch a clip of you talking about some sort of titty anime. You're like, well, I can dis I can defend this. It it's weird to talk about stuff that is kind of immature and yeah. then have like your uncle Yeah, see but it. that this is the assumption, Pete, that you that my family has great expectations of me. <laughs> <laughs> which they most certainly do not. I see, the I see. moment I said I want to be a YouTuber full time. It just went down here. They were like, all right. So well, they're like, yeah, of course he's talking about anime yeah. titties. It's whatever. I feel like my parents have gone through an entire carrot arc that they've just not told me about of like acceptance. They've gone through like the five <laughs> stages of grief. Yeah. And I've just seen the acceptance part of it. Mm. But my parents just don't mention it. They just don't mention it. Well, they just don't mention it. They're like, we really like what you do 95% of the time. And we don't we don't talk about the yeah. other five. The other 5%. <laughs> That's a smart way of doing it. Just turning yeah. the blind eye. Yeah, I think they're just like, well, it kind of pays the bills. Does <laughs> your, do your parents will say, yeah, my son, he's a uh, he's a lifeguard. Do they just go to like the last job No, you no, had no, no, no. They, 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 they like that I do YouTube. Okay, I guess because so yeah. it's something you can- I well, think my, my, grandma, my grandma says that I'm a comedian, <laughs> <laughs> which is the biggest stretch in the no, world. No, comedian works. I get clowns sometimes, you know, I'm just doing stuff. Stuff like that, yeah. but yeah. What must I, I do? Why do you have to tell people that you don't do this? Job no, 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 no. I, I don't think anybody asks. But uh, <laughs> and the, the main thing is, I um, I think that my family is intrigued by, it and it helps that I'm so far away in Japan. Yeah, they think it's a phase. I certainly, I'm 40, Garnt. <laughs> if, if it's a you, phase, do you assume wait, no, that well, parents okay. ever change the price. way? First of all, I can only assume, and I feel like I'm getting this, as you get older, <laughs> people just stop caring what you're doing. They're like, you've, it's true. you have to have figured it out by now. I don't care. Like yeah. as long as you're not ruining your life, I'm which is debatable. I'm not the main character, it's fine. Well, no, like, no yeah. one is, no one's the no main, one's character. main character. So yeah, I think it's uh, an amusing little quirk that yeah. I've gone full time into playing video games and, yeah. and talking about, you know, stuff on the internet. Hey man, that's the dream job for a lot. Uh, it is uh, the dream job. I'm yeah. impressed because you you managed to even adapt to a streamer sleep schedule many times. Sometimes <laughs> I'll see, I'll wake up in the morning and Pete's been on for nine hours and I'll be like, yeah. wait, it's yeah. You say you're 40 year old, I've seen, I've seen like your live times. I'm like, there is no way this man is 40 years old. I think even from a young age, I've always preferred the nocturnal hours to mm. daytime. I've always enjoyed being awake all night That's a true games. gamer right here. <laughs> I, but but like, like you said, I've been playing games since they came, since they were invented. Yeah. And so that, Hand in hand goes <laughs> with night time. I beta tested like rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> it was just like rock, rock. And then we were like, we okay. So to shake it out. Yeah, so well, the rock, rock's gonna so get enough. Enough. One of these days, but it's I'm been- just waiting for the theory videos. Like how old is Pete really? Yeah, it's Well, pretty... if we go back in time. <laughs> But yeah, it's, I've always preferred those hours anyway. So this is a perfect job for someone like me. Yeah. Is it, is, did you did you ever suffer from like insomnia or anything like that? Or is it just something where you just found more comfort in the nighttime? Yeah, is it just natural to you? It's just natural. And mm. so like even some of the jobs I had uh, before even coming to Japan were like the overnight shift at these places oh, or, yeah. or the late, late the shift. Graveyard shifts. The yeah. graveyard shifts. Yeah. Plus, you know, I think like true gamers and true nerds will unite in knowing that well, I guess it's gotten easier now, but in the old days at school, there was no smartphones or tablets or laptops. Mm -hmm. So you, all of your nerd shit had to be done in between the hours of like 6 p.m. and 3 a.m. before you went to school the next day. I think all of us were kind of in the same- Yeah, I think uh, so, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I didn't have access I just to. don't have the energy to do it nowadays. Oh, well. I hit 11 oh. p.m. and I'm like, fuck, I, it's not no, it's, 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 I can I can easily go till four or five, but you know, the thing that sucks is I really, really hate this this sobering moment when you're like, ah, oh, I should probably get, oh, it's light outside. I love that. Yeah. I, I hate, hate that. I, hate that moment. I love it. I oh, that. the breakfast menu is open. So. No, oh, no. Uh, I guess it's just, I mean, it is slightly haunting when you when you leave your dark room and then you go outside and it's it's 9 a.m. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> that, that People is, have already gone to work. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, oh my I God. I just like, I, I remember having this sobering moment where I think we did like all night karaoke or something like that. Yeah. And you know, the sun had come out. It was <laughs> like the uh, getting the last train. And I just like, I was just looking at Eddie, everyone walking past me and I fucking despised everyone. Cause I was like, 
fuck these people with an adequate amount of sleep in their body right now. Yeah. That should have been me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that was the last it's, time. It sounds like an amazing <laughs> idea until you actually do it. <laughs> yeah. And then the next one you're like, shit, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah, just wake up at 2 p.m. then, you know? So just just adjust your sleeping times. But. That's not what every motivational video under the sun says. <laughs> they get up at like 3 a.m. last month. <laughs> Grind yeah, set, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Every Three hours of sleep, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I'm just unorthodox in my approach to anything I've ever done, so but has, I like it. Has Twitch changed much? Uh, has live streaming changed uh, any, any amount since you were last on or anything significant? You've Revelations you've had? Or? Since I started streaming or Twitch in general? Uh, so. Since you started streaming. Um, no. Like full time, she's been pretty smooth sailing. Well, I mean, it's not smooth sailing, I guess, but for me, it's, it's I, I hearken back to more of like the older days of Twitch, which is kind of more, you know, let's plays and like hanging out. I kind of try to imagine that I'm just having a game night or a LAN party at, and it just so happens that everyone mm. is there with me. Right. Yeah. And I know that Twitch has changed a lot with like doing <clears throat> events and having these, these kind of cool things. Mm. But for me, I've had the similar approach when it's my channel, just mm. to kind of enjoy yeah. Yeah, that yeah. stuff. So, Keeping it casual. Yeah. yeah, it's been great fun. Yeah. I really like it. For I sure. would not change this job for anything. It's so. a pretty nice job. Just getting to play your favorite game. Yeah. Yep. Or, yep. or games you hate. It's been some of your favorite games that you've been able to share with the world on stream. This is, this is so bad because the games that I want to champion. It's not the ones not that are for like Twitch. good They're for not Twitch. They're not built for Twitch. Yeah. And yeah. It's, 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 I get labeled a lot as a retro streamer. And yeah. I, I'm really not because I play a lot of modern games. <laughs> But I think, but I, I swear I'm not, guys. I swear not, I'm not. not being those allegations. No, but I, I think of the people who are in Japan, I might be the only one who does stream retro more often than not. So that's right. all I get. But right. games like Hideo Kojima's Snatcher, well, Monkey well, Island, all well, the old RPGs from yeah. our from our generation, my generation. You played them though. I never I played, played Monkey yeah. Island. Oh, Monkey Island's great. Monkey Island's a great game. It's yeah, so too much talking, really, for me. You you get to voice act them though. There's no, there's no. I, so yeah, I, the one thing that I'm impressed by is that you always are voice acting all your all the characters on yeah. the stream, which is which is fun, but also I, for me it's very exhausting to voice act all the characters. Yeah. Uh, oh, but I, you love that shit, don't it's you? It's my favorite. And also, part. I yeah. I hate voicing like uh, if there's a as a woman character, my range is just not that of such where I could do it comfortably at all. Well, that's gonna be a given, given that we are, yeah. we have such a deep voice. Well, back back when I was streaming, I used to use that <laughs> as an excuse to practice. Mm. But, yeah, but because I, my I'm never gonna be... voice act a woman. My range is just my completely chat out would of- My be very brutal being like, that's a shit voice. And yeah. I'd be like, all right, let's not do that. And to me, it's like, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm like, there's a character that I feel like is really in, in my, my range and yeah, I can really yeah. give it a really good crack. And I'm like, yes, this, the thought of having to end this lineage right here. And then I go to, oh geez, I don't know. Yeah. And, then I'm like, I'm like, and I'm like, oh my God, this is just like the dichotomy between me giving a really like trying to do this voice well and then having to be like, Oh. No, I'm, in, I'm in the same can as Fade. I, I love doing that. And also, the best. typically, yeah. I, I whenever I've done games or I've done uh, whatever, and I, I'm never the main character in these types of. My, my voice is generally not main right. character material. Mm -hmm. uh, so the main character is always like, "Yeah, let's do it," and it's just like this doesn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> then when yeah, the villain you, comes on, I'm like, "All right, let's go." Yeah. Yeah. You get to be. You get to decide what all these guys yeah, sound that's true, like. That's and true. So that's that. That is the best part. And obviously, any woman voice that I've ever done, uh, unless. <laughs> It's like the the secretary that I used the same voice for my mom where it's like, you know, Ghostbusters, what do you want? Like that's yeah. fine. I can get away with that yeah. once per game. Yeah. But the most universally hated voice that I I think sounds accurate, okay. but yeah. everybody seems to disagree is my any child in any video game, I yeah. give the same voice. And it sounds like this. And you guys can be the official <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. Let's let's it's, imagine. Not, it's not that impressive oh, because it's right. like right. I'm closing my eyes, I'm closing okay, my eyes. Just imagine I'm like six, okay? Okay. 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 <laughs> That's fucking awful. That's, that's fucking how kids talk. That's I've never no, met a kid. That's where? In, where? in, no, like, they're they're in so what? Funny. In the fucking they, Sopranos? They, they, like, yeah, no, it's, I, you sound like Marge gurgling water. I need the no trash for me. Did that kid voice? Did that kid just like pack away a, like a pack of Marlboros? I think that's 100% canon. So it's like. The, the average yeah, Kansas City yeah. kid. Yeah. 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 Newspapers, smoking yeah. 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 All right, well, I guess that's a loss, but um, 
I, I am not changing or budging from that. Voice. I mean, it's funny when you did it, but imagining a whole stream of you doing <laughs> that, I can imagine could get a big rating. That's why I lost so many followers. No, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, other than voice acting and, and Twitch things, um, you never know how long these careers are going to last because they're so yep. finite. Of course. And yep. so I just, I just hope that as I have with all the weird careers and jobs that I've had, I hope this one leads to something satisfying as mm, well by its yeah. natural conclusion. Yeah. This, uh, this is completely off topic. Uh, I don't think I've ever asked you this. Oh. Were you a theater kid? In, in school? Yes, I okay, was. Yes. Okay. Bro, he is the ultimate I, I, was yes. just, I was just like, I just wanted to confirm because I just assumed yeah. you were. And God, I, I figured just... that out first five minutes of meeting. Yeah. Okay, okay. I okay. was also a, a theater major in college. So I doubled down <laughs> into debt. Um, but so I think as long as I can remember performance or theater, but theater kid seems to be more of an insult these days. I've noticed it's like kind I of- I think a, it just uh, means more expressive. It, yeah, yeah, it depends yeah. on the person, I think. It used it's, to be it's, a it's the energy, you know, yeah. it's the energy of just, not not exactly like wanting to be the center of attention, but just wanting to go out there and express themselves. Yeah, you know? maybe yeah. that's true, yeah, but yeah. It's, it hey, was, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing no, 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 wrong no, no, with no. that. But I, I noticed it's these just days. A, it's, it's just a unique energy, you know? I think it's like people who are like willing to throw themselves into a moment for, mm, like, yeah. for like whatever purpose, mm. be it like a, a, in joke with your friends or if it's a performance or whatever. Is yeah. theater kid considered an insult? I think it now it's, context, I think yeah. now it depends on the, con like let's go back to 25 years ago, right? When yeah. I was around high school and stuff, you had jocks, you had band kids, you had choir kids, you had like- Choir kids? Yeah, like the ones who sing a lot, oh, you know, those nerds. Down. But like, you know, no, I'm, ki I'm kidding, I'm <laughs> kidding. I was in choir, but they kicked me out. But like, but theater kid wasn't really an established trope Okay, yet. actually, before, before, you, before you get further, I just, everything you just named out sounds like a typical American high school oh, movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to, I, I want to ask how accurate are American high school movies? Cause I remember like, when I first started dating Sydney, I was like, oh, was your school like this? Was the dynamics like this? And, she, and her school was like, no, it was like nothing like that. I, was I, your yeah, school Yeah, like I that? think, it, it, so before I answer the question, yeah. I am very curious on to see what is your imagination? Can you tell me what is your expectation of an American <sighs> high school? All kids right. getting pushed into the lockers. lockers yeah. yeah, kids getting put in lockers, uh, the jocks, uh, basically, Every mid two thousands American high school leather movie. jacket, yeah, yeah leather of, jacket. Yeah. They're all American the jocks football. are always dating one of the cheerleaders. cheerleaders. There's, there's, there's yeah. the girl that's not like other girls that yeah. everyone secretly crushes over. And that, er everyone drives to school. Oh, that's yeah, definitely everyone true. Everyone drives to school. Everyone um, bullies all the AV club kids. Oh, yeah. certainly. Yeah. I was captain of that, <laughs> <laughs> but that's my and debate. So yeah. I was like, I was really, I was, I was down. Basically, but, but, if you distilled Mean Girls mm -hmm. into reality that's like what i imagined it would be i would say from when i went to high school brace yourselves from 98 to 2002 there was Damn. a very strong semblance of these kind of broad strokes of personalities yeah right. it was very clicky is really mm. what it was right so jocks or or sports related people didn't usually cross over into theater were no, they the cool was, kids were they the cool kids i would say that to put it into context um somehow i one prom king my senior year. This was an unprecedented feat in this sense. Before me, the previous <laughs> 19 winners had been sports captains. Right. And so I think- You broke the meta, man. I broke the meta by uh, thug intimidation and like uh, rigging the votes. But like, no, but like for a really long time, your your valedictorians or your, your most popular kids yeah would be sports stars right, or the captain right. of the basketball, football, wrestling teams. Yeah, yeah. You know what stood out to me when I was watching American uh, school stuff? And I guess even when I see pictures of it now, I'm like, huh, we have like way less stuff in British schools. We just don't have a lot of things. Like, it what do you seemed mean? Like, like the facilities were really good in American schools. Like they, like the idea of having lockers, I was like, that's- You guys didn't have lockers? No, you don't get a locker. In I thought time. everything oh, was we, like we Harry Potter. You had you common rooms. No, you don't get lockers. You don't boys. get lockers in your school, right? I don't think we did. No, no we didn't have lockers. We, we had lockers, but they weren't like the huge oh, yeah, American the size ones. ones. Yeah, it's like, crazy also, that like, you get a locker. I, like that's why you would line up in a bag and use to lug it around all day. No, no, no. We because the most valuable time was the like five to ten minutes between class. Right. We'd go to your locker and hang out, and like you'd have like the hmm. full suite of whatever. You know, we didn't really get time in between classes. You usually no. just go right to the next one. Yeah. Which, what goes in a locker? 
Well, you got your bags. That's yeah. most important. The you don't just carry the you 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 girls, girls had like mirrors and makeup and like all kinds of different things that they could, ad- and, you know, address yeah. and yeah. do stuff. Yeah. Uh, I kept comic books, Game Boy <laughs> materials, <laughs> uh, you know, trading cards, you know, things that were more relevant to uh, someone my age in the 90s. And then. <laughs> I guess now I can just I I, I'm like imagining just your character archetype in every like high school movie now, man. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I I was the kid pushed into the lockers. I'd be like, I'm gonna get you. I I I also saw this new school in Texas. It was like I don't know if you can get a picture of it. There was this like super school being built in Texas. Okay, Mm -hmm. and the cafeteria was just all fast food chains. Uh, We had that. The thought of having a fast food chain in the school blows my mind. We. Uh, I don't know if I can. Oh, it's like a. Yeah, fast food chain. There was like this. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, yeah, wait, yeah click a, that one. Click that wait, one. Wait, that's a mall. This is this is a no, high, this school. Is a high school. school. This is a high school in Texas. It has Sonic, uh, uh, Jimmy John's, Pizza, Pizza, Pizza Hut, Subway. Subway. Isn't this insane? Al- not even our uni had this. I think. Yeah. I think genuinely, if this happened in the UK, there'd be a riot. Why? You, the thought of allowing these brands into your school. Yeah. To like. Oh, that's get not so the, bad. Get kids like hooked oh. on this style of food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like, work, yeah, I, yeah. I, I had this feeling when, uh, I think we had a brief conversation about this on the RV trip. But I remember thinking like those, well, you only go to those McDonald's parties as a kid. I feel like, man, I think McDonald's did such a good job on, on influencing mm. me to like McDonald's my entire life. Absolutely. Oh yeah. You're talking about Absolutely. like the playpen era? Yeah, like yeah. You'd have, everyone would have McDonald's parties and it was like a treat when you get to go. And it's like, they did such a good way of like- Dude, the McDonald's yeah. ice cream and I feel like slaps. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like there's a, I have this like deep like calling that I just like McDonald's a lot. And, and I don't feel like I, it's because I was like, wow, this is really tasty. And I just feel like it's a thing that I've always liked. Yeah, and it's a constant it's that I've had. It's always been in like the recesses of your. And I feel like that's how you get like li- lifelong customers is by putting fucking Jimmy Johns in school <laughs> and then getting them onto it. Yeah, that's yeah, true. and making a, a profit. Domino's and Subway was our twos. That what? But there was that's two insane. different food courts. There was the food court which had like the slop that they put on the the thing and you ordered it. Yeah. There was mm-hmm. an a la carte section. Yeah. And then like a a different food court that had pizza and Subway sandwiches. That's crazy. So who would ever go to the slop section? Um, actually a fair amount of people because- really? it's there's expensive, right? It's it. about the same, right? Cause you get the pizza by the slice or you get like a $5 Subway sandwich. But yeah. the interesting thing about the food court is you ended up over four years of high school getting your favorite <laughs> like, oh man, the mozzarella sticks are great. Also, I like the cheeseburgers over here because they taste this way. It sounds so unhealthy already. Yeah. I mean, it's American school system. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, yeah. That's how we do things, but yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of like when I started to like stuff like, you know, McDonald's, Pizza Huts and things like that. And I'm like, would I have liked it if I didn't have it as a kid? And I think I still would. Mm. I don't know. I mean, there's, there's, I'm sure there's something I would still like, but I feel like it's definitely solidified my yeah. my love for this. Because McDonald's has that taste. Yep, It's a very distinct taste. And I feel like I've been hooked on that since I was a kid. It's weird that we have cravings for McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, I get cravings like, for McDonald's. That's, that's unhealthy. Yeah. Bro, I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> loving it. There you go. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like it's hacked some part of my brain? Yeah. Well, it used to be a reward. Like you didn't yeah, I mean, yeah, nowadays. Yeah. You eat fast food all the time. But I remember when we grew up, it was kind of like once every two or three weeks, or after like a dentist, you'd go no, get a milkshake yeah. or something. But now it's uh, a lot of people just eat it every day. Well, I, I, I have a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Self admission. Uh, uh, so, yeah. yeah, pretty bad. But, I don't. Know. I think it was like the fries that hooked me on McDonald's. Oh yeah, then, fries are good. Like. It's There's something on the menu that I think everyone has a craving for. Yeah, I, Japan, something about the fries where, you know, no matter what, McDonald's fries will always be a staple, no matter where I go in the world of something that I will crave. Mm. Um, it's, the, it's the Big Mac for me. And it's not the even- The Big Mac? I like the, the spicy chicken that's one. Spicy chicken, that's Spicy right. chicken. That one is also good. It's so good in, so Japan. Good. in Japan. You gotta get it. They try double to double it down with the spicy beef and I'm like, it ain't mm. the same. No, no, it's not ain't very the good. Same. <laughs> Damn, I'm glad you, yeah, we, we, we shared a mutual love of the spicy chicken. Wow. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we've chicken. ever simped for a fucking fast food chain. That's much as we have now. See, now we're like in high school again. Yeah. Yeah. See, like, yeah. they've, they've, if I'm thing. sure if I had fucking Jimmy John's uh, at school, I'm, I'd be Jimmy like, Jimmy John's is fucking goaded though, Yeah, I know man. Jimmy John's is good. Jimmy John's but, is great. But yeah. I shouldn't get hooked on it as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I, should, I should be forced to eat shit like broccoli. Mm. But, okay, if, were you forced to eat shit like broccoli? Yes. Yeah, and yes, I surely was. that should have conditioned you to like it though, right? But no, actually like some of- Wait, no, yes, I like broccoli No, I love now. broccoli. You love broccoli? Yeah. I think because I was forced to eat it and get familiar with it, yeah. as I grew older, 
I then became slowly over time, you're like, oh, I kind of like this thing now. And I feel like that's how a lot of, why I can't enjoy a lot of Japanese foods because I, I, I wasn't forced to eat them growing up. Like, uh, like natto is kind of tough for me because yeah. I never had anything like that, I, I, the smell or texture. I feel like there is an element of that to that, uh, but I also feel like, I don't know, maybe children just have different palates as well. Of course they, they do, they, but you, they, are, change. Yeah, they change. Yeah, yeah. There, there are so many things that I hated as a kid and you know, um, I kind of every time I ate it, like no matter how much my parents tried mm. to force me, I would be like, no, I don't want to fucking eat this, <laughs> you know. And then I, I swear, if you eat something though a lot growing up, you will gradually become more used to it, unless you're really like traumatized or scarred by it. <laughs> like tequila, <laughs> yeah. Well, alcohol like, that yeah, does, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I got like uh, no one should be ingesting that. I got traumatized no. out of ever eating fucking Brussels sprouts for oh, like so many years, uh, and now I fucking love them. And mm. you know, so had a period of my life. Same with uh, cauliflower. I, I like I I ate a lot of cauliflower as a kid, and uh, that like meant that when I was a young adult, I just like I can choose not to eat cauliflower anymore. <laughs> and now I think it tastes fucking great. Yeah, yeah. cooked the right way, you know. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's a palate thing as well. Maybe, maybe I don't know. But there are I'm a lot sure of there's some but there are a lot this. of kids who like grow up not eating like certain things, and that just like persists for the rest of their life, and there's no explanation to it. Yeah, it's wild. You know, so isn't I it? think it's just I, it's a mindset. Yeah, and I it think- It is a mindset. Yeah. Maybe also, I think I went too far. Like when we're young, your parents say, you know, when you're older, you can eat cookies in bed, all right? And then when I got older, I did. Endlessly. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like, got- Don't mind if I do. <laughs> good, good I, story arc right there. I, can tell. I overindulged on the freedom. Yeah. And then it kind of went past the tipping point back around where I'm like, I like eggplant and, and spinach and cauliflower. I feel like yeah. you, you have to overindulge though at yeah. some point yeah. in your life so that you're like, man, I-, I I know how it feels to overindulge yeah, yeah. and I'll go back. When you're a kid, when you overindulge, you don't, you're like, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. yeah. But as like a young adult, you know, you have a, a night where you're just eating like three packets of chips and, uh, and a diet you feel coke. awful. Yes. The next yeah. morning you're just like, oh God, I shouldn't have done that. You just described last night for me, but thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. Part of the charm was being told you couldn't do that. So yep. you're like, hmm, but now it just makes but me want if? to. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what if I want ice cream for breakfast? That sounds incredible. And then you do it once. And then you and do then it and you're like, oh, this is bad. Yeah. <laughs> this is disgusting. I'm shitting yeah. myself at 10 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> What's your go-to comfort food in Japan? I don't think I've ever asked oh, you this. Man, like go-to comfort food. Like I, you're, you're not concerned about calories. You just want something that's kind of quick, but it's, what is, what's the go-to comfort food for you? I mean, it's it's tough, right? There's actually, there's a two part answer. Okay, okay, One is okay. if I'm craving something Western because I yeah. miss right, that of aspect of my life, yeah. it'll probably be Mexican food. Oh, yeah. I, I just love Mexican yeah, food. Yeah, for sure. And um, if it's the Japanese side, it's ramen. Ramen, And th yeah, these yeah. are such unoriginal answers, yeah, I know. That's fine. But, like, I, yeah, that, yeah, but it makes sense. Some these are just great yeah. comfort foods. And yeah. like a tonkotsu ramen, like with spinach and like, it, it's good at really anytime after 2 p.m. until 4 a.m. I would eat that any anytime. And then yeah. uh, Mexican food is just goaded. Oh yeah, we always yeah. go to Mexican yeah. food places. Yeah. It's, it's so weird because Mexican food was never really part of our palate growing up in the UK. It was mm. so hard to find a Mexican food restaurant. Uh, and now, you know, it's it's weird growing up now. Now I have cravings about cuisines for cuisines that I never had growing oh, up. My mom used to always make those uh, old El Paso starter kits. Oh, yeah, those are great. <laughs> been, uh, yeah, 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 actually, those the like, hard shell ones. Yeah, uh, no, no, there's, there's hard shell. There's also shelf ones. ones too. Th those are goaded though. I, I still have cravings for this uh, because dude, I, I still not, I still yeah, remember like, the ads. Yeah, and I, my mom used to make the fajita one all the time, and I used to think they taste so. Oh my god! Yeah, oh, these are great. These these are still goaded. I still old El Paso. I still fuck with Mexican it. style. <laughs> but like, I still remember the ads. Because you can like throw in just a bunch of chicken and a bunch of peppers. And yeah. You're like, man, I feel kind of good about this. Like I don't feel awful. I mean, yeah, I yeah. still sometimes do like breakfast burritos in the morning. Absolutely. Yeah. With That's like some chicken and spinach and stuff. Like it's it's good. But when, whenever I go to, God, uh, whenever I go to California, I'm just reminded how <laughs> goddamn good Mexican food yeah, is Yeah, it's, it's really yeah. unfair. That breakfast yeah. burrito we had. That was, was amazing. Because I feel like a lot of breakfast burritos, my, pro my problem is, is that a lot of the time, uh, all the ingredients don't really blend well sometimes. Mm. The egg is too scrambled or the bacon mm. is too overpowering. And so it's really easy to get a breakfast bagel that's just like kind of like egg and bread. And you're like, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, breakfast burrito. And mm. so, but in California, man, oh, they just go. 
Yeah, they figured they it out. So hard. I do miss the Totino's pizzas from when I was. A, these were like seventy nine. The cents. little ones. Uh, the they're little like, ones. They're like yeah. they're like this big. You know, they're like not the little. No, no, you're talking I, about pizza. The pizza little, rolls. Yeah, pizza rolls. Also Totino's, but yeah. the Totino's pizzas were. I think that sustained me through college. Is it Totino's or Tostino's? I'm like, I don't know. It? It's either Tostino's I think or it's Totino's. Tostino's. Right. It's maybe we. Have not, I've never even had this, by the way. But it's I. A, it's yeah. A, is it Totino's? Yeah, it's Totino's. Okay. Totino's, yeah. Totino's. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm my wrong. Totino's I, I pizza. But even not the pizza rolls themselves because those were a uh, <clears throat> delectable snack, but the the old 79 cent pizza. <laughs> Have you seen this? Have you seen this one? What? In the face the face hell? Clan. Oh, Clan oh, has yeah. one? Baze Clan orange, orange chicken. chicken Totino oh. pizza roll. I'm never moving I back. I did see <laughs> someone on TikTok make a breakfast burrito with that and it was the saddest like, thing. <laughs> yeah, so, it's, no, I, I think used to eat these took all the time. me off of Totino's completely Buffalo now. Buffalo style that. chicken pizza snacks. Yeah. That's just not what I'm looking for. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I do miss cravings, but you know what? I, I think Japan is one of the great places on earth that you can really go outside your house and find 25 different things to eat. True. Yeah. For really yeah. affordable prices. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. we're pretty lucky in that regard. Yeah, my, my brother's visiting right now and he's uh, just amazed at how cheap everything is. And I'm like, well, it's you bear in mind well that yeah. the yen also. Yeah. The yen keeps tanking. It, it did tank. You know? It came at a good time. Yeah. yeah. I was like, you, you have a very good rate right now. Yeah. Every, every week I'm like, oh, it's a new record low. That's that's great. All but my he went money. To, he went to Ichiran and he loved it. Ichiran's not bad. It's a I good like, little chain. I, I, it's I love Ichiran. I think mm. it's still good. I know Jerry hates it. Yeah, I think it's overrated. Look at how it. smug he looks. It's overrated. But the noodles spot. are not I very good. I think it tastes great. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the most like five out of 10 thing ever. Well, um, still, I like ramen, but I it's think- McDonald's the, of ramen. Yeah. It is, which I, it's a comfort. Yeah. But I'll never line up for it. I don't know, these people who fucking line up for 40 minutes. <laughs> oh, it's psychotic. What the fuck? Psychotic. Stop. Yeah. The, the big thing about America though that surprised me because we just came back yeah, did, from yeah. Las Vegas mm -hmm. to Los Angeles was, my God, the prices of food is insane though. I went oh, to yeah. a sandwich yep. place and I was feeling pretty <sighs> badass. I was like, don't worry oh, guys, no. <laughs> yeah. I got it. And then uh, we got five sandwiches and these were just like normal Italian, but some mom and pop store. They were very good. They were yeah. very good. They, oh, were, really? they were oh. very good, but, and then I, I, I was like, I have a card and I thumped it down on the table like I was the king of all creation. <laughs> and then it was like, beep, beep, beep. And I was like, what's going on over there? And they're like, sir, it's been declined. And I was like, let me take a look. It was $125 for five sandwiches. $125 We're in LA. I mean, $25 yeah. a was that, was sandwich? That, was that the is, it was 20 to, two, 20 to $22 per sandwich. And I didn't even include the tip yet, plus taxes. And then of course somebody- What the fuck was in a caviar? Well, that's what okay. I thought. It and was, to be fair, it was some fancy Italian fancy. one. Well, it was, they baked their own bread, which is I something. <laughs> we're in LA. We can, we, listen, we can was go to- LA or go. Las Vegas? It's in LA. LA. Oh, okay. These are LA that prices. Makes sense. Okay, LA. That makes sense. And it was yeah. because you added the burrata to each sandwich, which was like an extra $5, which is Man. A, way, way of a price of burrata. And, well, anyway, I was like, try this card, please. And then they were like, it's been declined. And I was like, here's all my money that I brought. And then, you know, I was embarrassed. I couldn't believe $125 for, yeah. for five sandwiches. That's just, like almost 20,000 yen. It is. Yeah. Isn't that insane? Yeah, we, we, did, we did have this discussion of like how that would be a full on restaurant meal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It'd be like an omakase, like a, a recommended sushi course for yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. With like alcohol and a bunch yeah. of yeah. Yeah. It, is, it is absurd. Well, I think, uh, <laughs> Yeah, everything everything was so expensive. Yeah. yeah, I feel bad for my Americans there out was, there. I understand your pain. There was stuff. this. Now I, now I know why every American just, like whenever they come to Japan, it's like a kid in a candy store. They're mm. like, I could buy everything. Like, this we, is only $3. We had a, a night crazy. free in Los Angeles and um, we, we were gonna go out to a, <laughs> <laughs> so, can I tell this story? Uh, <laughs> we we go out to this, uh, we, we found this cool gaming bar. Well, yeah. Pete found it. I and found it. it. And yeah. uh, it was like 20 minutes away. We're like, yeah, fuck it, let's go. Yeah. Let's do it. No so problem. we go over to this, this gaming bar <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's in like kind of a, I would, I would say it's a little sketchy area. It wasn't like, it was, uh, it was, it wasn't like the best. Anyway, so the security at the, at the door of this bar uh, mm -hmm. and we go in, and he's like, Security can we see you? For a barcade? I'm sorry, yeah. what, who's yes. going into a barcade yeah. and causing troubles? <laughs> okay. But so, you know, we, we go in <laughs> and uh, we're sitting there and uh, we just had like a, such a long talk with this Uber driver as well. It went on for ages. So I was, right. I felt like I was like, I was like, okay, let's play some games. And it looks amazing. There's so many like old retro games. There's a giant list of craft beers and food. And I was like, oh, okay. And it's good. all kind of tucked behind this glass where you can yeah. see it all. Yeah. Yeah. You can do anything you want for yeah. the next six or seven hours. Yeah, yeah. it's and, beautiful. Uh, we met with this kind of like, what I can only describe as, uh, <laughs> 
Um, what's the what's the old guy from Breaking Bad called again? Mike. Mike. It's like a Mike esque kind of yeah. security guard sitting there, and uh, obviously, obviously, we're in LA, and it's very common where they'll ask for your ID. Yeah. Uh, and you know, normally you can kind of get away with whatever ID you have. So, I, but I haven't have my passport, and I show it, and and Pete, you show your Japanese card. He's like. What is this? <laughs> I was like, well, it's an ID from Japan. That is a nation. He was like, I'm going to need to see something with letters. Yeah, he said, <laughs> he said something with letters. And I, I point out to him, I'm like, well, you know, this, you know the date of birth is, is right there it's, in, it's in, in numbers. Numbers, numbers. numbers yeah. are universal. Uh, it's just date of birth in English. On, and he was on doing this all the stuff. He was holding it up. There's not even a light to hold it up to. He's like in this dark piece, like, I've never seen nothing like with these squeaks. And I was like, there's also letters on the top that says nation and like date of birth. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. written in English. It's yeah. written in English. And he was yeah. like, I'm not going to let you in unless you have your passport. And I was like, well, now you're doubting that I'm American. Yeah. I was like, where do you think I'm coming from? Like, or it's, it's either you doubt- You're about your high school years now. Yeah, I was like, yeah. he's bullying me. Yeah, he's like, oh, I can't let you in unless I scan it. And I was like, scan what? Like, what do you mean? Like, uh, the, I like not to not you know not to be mean, but you don't luck under twenty one. It was on the twenty fence. maybe was, twenty to twenty two is what no, I usually you know, get. In England, it's like the challenge twenty five rule. Uh, no, there's no such thing in the UK of if you look old, they're not gonna fucking. No, not old, well, yeah. if you look experienced, yeah, and mature, yeah, they're not gonna yeah. fucking Giga say that. No. Esque. <laughs> Season three, um, but no, I was quickly humbled and there was nothing on earth we could do yeah, other would, than show my understand. passport. What and the fuck? He denied yeah. all sorts of my other cards and in different, you know, health insurance. And he was like, unless it's got letters, I can't scan it. And we were like, all right. So we had to turn away from this glorious yeah. uh, blinking, shining thing. And I took you to the worst fried chicken place. <laughs> and all we, we of- We uh, this sports bar that looked kind of cool. And it had like a retro sign of punch out outside. And it looked really mm. cool. And the lighting was awesome. We, we sit down and uh, I got the chicken tenders. I was a child. Yeah. Wood. You got, you got a bu chicken burger. I did. And uh, they were just, it was like, what, $15 for this thing? And it was they were yeah. just like, like, like frozen nuggets. It was horrible. It was the worst. I, I found out something, by the way. So I, so I felt so, I was like, don't worry, Connor, I'll pay for this. He was this. very annoyed. He was very upset. Down and they were like, it's been declined. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, no, I, 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 this one, it, it worked. Oh, and yeah. uh, we got our thing. You know what I found out? All of that was vegan. That's why it was... Oh. So it wasn't a chicken so place. So blame the vegans. Well, Wait, how did saying, you find that? Out? Because I was so upset that I picked the worst chicken spot on the planet. You wanted the reason. You wanted. I know wanted how. to know how could this exist with chicken that this bad? That makes so much sense. It tastes it, a lot better now. It was like uh, it was like <laughs> it was a chicken tender, and it came out looking like. Uh, like a cylinder. Yeah. And I was like, right. what the fuck is this? Like I bite into it. Yeah. yeah. And I, I bite into it and it was like crumbled. I was like, what the fuck is this? And I was in full defense mode. I was like, you know, a lot of chickens, they look like that. It's just a w different cuts. It's just an American chicken, you know. It's, it's it We've seen it, that before. It was a square. And yeah. I was like, ah, oh, you know, the thighs these days, you know. And, like, <laughs> and so. They've roided them up. They, yeah. <laughs> But uh, kind of redemption arc that they were trying to give chicken. Okay, that makes yeah. that makes me feel vegan a bit better. chicken place. I like it a lot more now. Does it make it better? No, it was still bad food. I mean, <laughs> was, I mean, actually, if you the, the fried place, pickles were good, which is a thing good, I wish yeah. that Japan would adopt and the mm. UK. Yeah, uh, pickles just deep fried. I'm like, oh. this is great. I love it. <laughs> just deep fried. This is great. <laughs> yeah, that but, was a horrible, horrible um, hundred dollars we spent trying to go to one barcade. <laughs> yeah, damn, hundred dollars. Yeah. I mean, two Ubers plus the, oh, the, the oh. meal, and you're looking at like. And we didn't even do anything. <laughs> so it was um, sounds like LA. my fault. Yeah, it sounds like LA. So damn. How did you find Las Vegas? I hated it. No, I'm kidding. It was it, Vegas well, was cool. But... I, I think Vegas, <laughs> they, well, I think I said this uh, on the previous episode. Uh, Vegas is like a two day thing. I think four yeah. days was just too long in Vegas. <laughs> this is 100 percent the case. I feel like if you're gonna go, and the big thing is, hey, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Let's gamble. I think the Friday Saturday finish Saturday night, go back or mm -hmm. Sunday morning is, yeah. but I think anything longer than those 48 hours, you, you just hate the experience by the end. Mm. Yeah. But, um, Personally speaking, I love gambling and I love the, <laughs> I love the idea of, of risking it all where I'm like, you know, all on black. And they're like, you lose. And yeah. then, or I'm playing blackjack and I don't know the rules that well. I'm like, I'll stay. And they're like, sir, it's eight. And I'm like, I like to live dead. Double it. And then it's like, you lose. But it was so much fun for me to, to be to a lose money. So, yeah, to lose money uh, with, with, 
you know, vigor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's if you go out with style, you that's all that You have to go in the mindset of, I'm going to lose this money. Well, and that is, does. well, I did Sounds most like certainly. Loser. Yeah, I did no, lose. We did lose. <laughs> well, uh, the one night, he, he got very annoyed at me one night uh, because we were, I'd been losing all night. Mm -hmm. right? I was like, guys, one last hand. We bet it all. <laughs> and, and, and he had just won a big hand. <laughs> he did. He just won a big hand. And I was like, guys, if we're going to leave, we should just put all our fucking money on the table. Yeah. And if we lose, we lose. And if we win, it'll be an epic story. <laughs> Of course we lose. Of course we lost yeah. immediately. Immediately. It was like, a, oh, the dealer got 21. Yeah, was, it wasn't even oh, fun. We didn't even get to play it. We didn't even get to play it. Yeah. Because yeah. Vegas has this horrible system where the dealer gets to basically like win instantly. Yeah, insta kill. Yeah. It's, it's shit. Don't, I mean, generally gambling in Vegas is just a terrible idea in general. But Unless it, you play craps. No, craps. <laughs> that is a, a, a sport of kings because <sighs> you control the outcome. No, you don't. <laughs> you have You don't power. know how Please math works. How gambling works. I'm telling you, that's <laughs> way more skill-based than ever. it is love. Oh my God, please do not listen <laughs> to this. This is absolutely incorrect. This is not perfect. This is- uh, Gambling is never a good thing. You should yeah. never do it. But if you want to have fun, craps is fun. Yeah. 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 With friends, the if you are way you prepared can to lose money. The odds is by counting cards, which is, is that illegal. That's yeah, illegal. Yeah. No, it's, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's no, actually no, just it's, no, no, it's, it's illegal it's, if you get caught. No, yeah. it's no, no, no. It's also not. It, you can't. It, they it can is, just ask you to leave. They can just ban you. Yeah. It's not oh, illegal yeah. though. Yeah, uh, they can. They can ban you, and they can make you illegal for you to. Uh, and to foot into casinos. Right, but yeah. mm. It's not illegal to count cards. Uh, you can, yeah. That's like saying it's illegal to be good at playing like American football. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. there's, they, that, <laughs> well, because that's essentially what you're doing. Like you're saying, hey, you are too good at this. You are, that is illegal. Right. But mm. they have to make it fair. No, all yeah. jokes aside, uh, I just like craps because it, it's, a it's fun the kind most of, interactive yeah. game you can play. But that's the problem. Lose. The more interactive the game, <laughs> the faster it is to uh, lose money. Yeah. And I feel that's easier. a bit Stockholm scene. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. A bit, but I mean, I will- I'm like, I don't mind losing money like that. because it's fun. But like the thing about craps that I do like is that you can put a pretty minimum bet down and just enjoy the atmosphere of the table mm, and not- say. I'm so, I swear. It always starts with a <laughs> minimum swear. bet. It always starts with a minimum when bet. When I go back, I'm gonna get back that 10,000 I lost. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I broke even on the trip because I didn't invest a lot because you set limits, obviously. And so yeah. I, I just kind of had fun with hanging out with friends. And so that was, yeah. that was a good experience, but won't be going back Man, anytime that's soon. that's worth more than any money it's in the world. worth more than all. It was, it was, in the, world. We were, the real gambling we were, was the friends we made along <laughs> the way. Thing, we didn't lose the friends <laughs> yeah. we made. One fun thing that happened is that we, we were doing craps on that. This, this gentleman came over and it was like he was locked in. Yeah. Mm. He was so serious. He, every single turn he would get the dice and he would line it up perfectly. And he'd put it on the exact number he wanted for both dice. And he would pinch it like this. And he would always throw it the same way. Wouldn't say a word and wouldn't get excited about anything. Mm. And uh, he was winning a lot. And then uh, he was just kind of like zoned in. Next day I go to TwitchCon, I'm about to go on this show and this producer guy comes up and he starts doing stuff. And I was like, oh, the guy from last night at the table. What? Yeah, yeah. He was that guy? And he was so jovial and happy and talking. And I was, it was just such a different energy. And I was like, yeah, you, you won, a, won a lot of money last night. He's like, I was on a tear last night, man. Whoa. I was in the zone. And I was like, whoa, okay, dude, okay, chill, dude. I just love to imagine the dichotomy between that guy who was like super fucking serious and Pete just going, Ugh! what? Yeah, yeah, everyone, everyone, was not everyone, going everyone, like everyone that. you're supposed to like bring your own energy it was, to it. Yeah. yeah, you're right, I was doing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right, I was just, let's go. And I was, I was definitely, it was my birthday and it was, I was slightly inebriated. I was possibly maybe shouting repeatedly every two minutes, we're printing money here. <laughs> I may or may not have been shouting that. And uh, yeah. I went on a pretty big tear though myself. Uh, and so- yeah, It's very fun when it all goes well, because it's the game pays out a lot, but then it's, it's very, very miserable. It's very sobering when you lose. Oh, it's very yeah, miserable it's because the odds of you getting it, yeah. because the game is designed as such that you have the highest odds of losing. Yeah. Yep. And so it just keeps happening a lot of times. Mm. And then everyone's just kind of like, oh. Well, it's the thrill of oh, that okay. one time you'd, where you defy those odds. the thrill of the hunt. Yep. But I, I also love Japanese kind of old style gambling, like Hanafuda or Chin Chidorin. Mm. Like these are just fun games that even if you don't invest money, the game itself is fun to play. So yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I, that's where I come from, I guess. I mean, yeah. I, I like games with stakes. Well, me too. Like games. So. It depends how high the stakes are though, you know? Yeah. $25. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I want a winner and I want a loser. Yeah. That's, uh, that's all that's important. But was that the first time you went back to America in like- Since 
Chris's chess boxing event uh, oh, the yeah, year you did before. Go the chess oh, yeah. It was only briefly yeah, yeah. for like those 48 hours or so. Yeah. Um, I don't get a chance to go back to the United States very often, but um, it's always a, it's always fun to remember why I love living in Japan. So <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great, it's a great nation. It's just, it's just not for me. Yeah, to be honest. So, yeah. I can't remember how long you've been living in Japan now. It's Almost 13 years. 13 years. Damn. Yeah, it's wild when you put it into context like that. Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> you know, I mean, you're not missing out on much. That Taco Bell tasting we did. That was, was horrible. Horrific. Well, it was okay. <laughs> I've never seen you so comatose. We did. We tried the entire Taco Bell menu. Mm. Right. And he was dead. I was hurting. I, I well, realized. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, I guess a lot's changed since I was 25 when I used to do this <laughs> on like a Friday. But I still have a soft place for uh, Taco Bell. I'll still ride and die with it. I love it. All of it. So you did not find L take, but that's okay. <laughs> it's whatever. It was fucking like, horrendous. It was, it was cold and it has the fastest <laughs> shelf life of all fast foods. You, you literally need to eat it in the car when you order it. Oh, that is the meta. Jesus Christ. So, this episode is sponsored by Boksu. Boksu isn't just a Japanese snack box. It is the premium Japanese snack box, guys. Boxu delivers the experience of tasting authentic Japanese snacks, candies, and tea sourced directly from centuries old small family businesses right to your door. Their mission is to empower Japan's traditional snack makers by sharing the authentic food and stories with the world. <laughs> My God, it looks like you have the Boxu Seasons of Japan box. Ooh, I right. do. This is the first Boxu that you get after you sign up to Boxu, and then every month afterwards, you get a special themed box. Damn. This is kind of like the special hits that you can get uh, that are normally not available all year round. Okay. But Boxu has made it available for your First month. Joe, what is this I got here? That uh, is Don Don Yaki. It's ooh. a savory senbei that's fried and marinated in tonkatsu ooh, sauce. Oh, this is gonna be good. I can already tell this is gonna be really addictive. Who needs British crisps anymore when you have this? Ooh, we huh? also have this tomato senbei, ooh. Boy, or similar style to it. Savory tomato senbei. Yeah, that crunch, boys. Oh yeah, let's get 500 more of those. So if you wanna give the gift of authentic Japanese snacks this coming oh, holiday so good. and support the channel in the oh. process, click God the link in so the much. description below and use the code TRASH to get $15 off $15 your first box of order. That's code TRASH at checkout for $15 off your first box of order. Back to the episode. I just lost no nut November. I was wondering how, how well you've adapted to all like the, let's say the online lingo and the online memes. I'm struggling. What's your favorite meme now? I just found out what down bad means. I thought- <laughs> Yeah, you, can, you, always, you do keep saying I'm I down bad. I thought it meant like at the gambling table, I was like, I'm down bad. <laughs> like, like I thought I was losing money, I'm down bad. Or it's like in the video- like, Did you get weird looks from like the ladies? I, know, like, no, I get weird looks you, anyway. You, you, down bad? you look at the dealer and you're like, Man, I'm really down bad today. <laughs> yeah, like, that's get away from me. <laughs> or, or like, I'll be playing like a video game and I'll, I'll like on Twitch or something, and I'll be losing yeah. subsequent like you know sweet yeah. game. Where I'm, uh, I'm down bad, and then <laughs> and then everyone, I guess that's similar to I really am horny. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, so you, stupid you that, also, that we've adopted oh, it's, that. It's more you like also, you're desperate. <laughs> oh, okay. you're desperately horny. I, one thing that you also <laughs> kept saying it, at some point uh -oh. is that you. And as you as a use for excited, you would say I'm bricked up. Yeah, I'm all bricked up. <laughs> that makes sense, man. I'm all bricked up. Like, I'd be like, are you ready for the day? He's like, I'm bricked up. I'm, bricked up. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I, I'm taking those words back. So I like, I'd be, you know, I'd be. <laughs> Did you ever have those words? No. <laughs> but I want to reestablish yeah. what they mean. So oh yeah, he'd be God. like, all right, today's a big day. We have Twitch rivals. I'm like, I'm all bricked up. I'm ready to go. What does that mean? Bricked up means you have a, a uh, fucking yeah. erection. Yeah, it's, it's your brick. It's, it's, your brick it's bricked. <laughs> it's like a brick. Like a brick. Uh, <laughs> all right. I, I mean, I, technically I, you're not wrong. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Like you're so excited <laughs> you have an so, erection. I was like, I'm bricked up. I'm bricked up. All right, well, your body's right. ready. Yeah. yeah. But the meme stuff, it just happens too fast. And it, <laughs> it, oh it's, yeah, it's absolutely. Just, and I'm okay with it. It's like, yeah. no one's ever gonna believe it and it's fine. But when I was the age where it was more, <laughs> accessible to me. It it was something memes? that was natural. Memes or joking or, or you know, certain vernacular or certain- yeah. Okay, what, what, what are you, some of your like classic memes then? Actually, if I'm being 100% honest, I'm pretty ashamed of what, in the early, the late 90s, early 2000s, a lot of the, the meme stuff was really offensive. And yeah. so- Oh yeah, it, like it, a lot of slows. It was just really yeah. bad. And yeah. like, and I think that even near the tail end, we all kind of got away from that. And it was like, but I would say things like, do people still say that's sick or badass or- yeah, you know, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are still 
I mean, like memes only came out like se- like ten years ago. Like well, advice that's animal. True. That's not true. That is true. <laughs> no, it is. It's like, not. Okay, wait, wait. Trace your meme history. Memes have been around since like late nineties, early two thousand. Oh, we're like, talking advice animals. Before that, before that. I, s- I before swear that. to God, the fucking cat hier- hieroglyphics and like the fucking ancient Egypt, those were like their version of memes. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Yeah, no, swear cat. down, swear down, Mate. man. Kill, like, Kill Roy is the original meme, yeah. the World War II little guy the, the you would guy. draw. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a, that, I, that I, can, I was talking meme. specifically about internet memes. Well, yeah. internet, internet memes, memes have been around since the internet. No, they haven't. Yes, no, they, they have. have. No, yes, they no. Have. no. Yes, they have. The Wild yes. West of the internet was a glorious <laughs> place where there was no rules established. There was like the best page in the universe. This was the most popular site to talk about jokes about from this one guy. And it's no longer really referenced anymore at all. Yeah. The first meme I can genuinely think of is all your base are belong to us. Oh, that, I mean, that's the classic. Yeah, that's Fire the classic. all zig. Yeah. Hi, can you Google what is the first internet meme? Because I'm, I'm genuinely I'm gonna curious. I'm going to say it was probably an advice animal or the dancing baby dancing from Ali McBeal. baby? No, that's from a TV show. No. Oh, Rufflecopter. 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 Hamster right. dance. Uh, all your base belong to us. There we go. All your base are belong to us. So I Godwin's was right. law. That's that's where if uh, a conversation goes long enough on the internet, it'll eventually reference Hitler. Yeah. Oh, so that was yeah. It's, it's a, a trap. Ah. Uh, yeah, but see, like Amsterdam. Amsterdam. That's a yeah. That's yeah. A, see, look, that's, that's this an old is one. still not ninety-eight. Yep. All yeah, your base belong to us. There I was. Yeah. Dancing, Dancing baby. baby. That's Ali McBeal, Godwin's which came law. out on Godwin's the show. Law. Yeah. <laughs> Just looking at that graph is really funny. It's just, yeah. It's true. It's, yeah. but see like that's, but the internet really came out like 95, 96 when it started becoming pervasive with like hat with like with Napster and downloading music. Yeah. And there was no memes yet. There was, and like was even that, that stuff, it was like 95, 96. No fucking way. Yeah. And that's, then it was shut down. <laughs> I, I was, I was born after Napster. No, you were not. I guess I was. When Metallica ruined all the Yeah, Metallica yeah. said fuck Napster. Yeah, that was good times, man. <laughs> it was good times. That's, that's an amazing clip. And Net clip. Zero and like all of the kind of, but like I, I would say meme culture didn't become meme culture until really Justin TV or Twitch when it was more universally adopted. I, I, I totally agree because I remember there was this moment in my like, let's say like YouTube history where everyone, you know, I've always tried to make comedic kind of videos, try, try to like put jokes in my videos. And f- somewhere along the lines, they stop calling my jokes jokes and they start calling them memes. I can't tell when that transition was, but I never changed the ways I started making my videos. That's mm. true. You never hear someone go, oh, that was a good joke. Yeah, 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 right? It's always, oh, that meme was killer. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's memeing, and, he's uh, joking. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know when that transition happened, but I remember when I first saw it, I was like, I'm not making a meme. I'm just, <laughs> just making a joke. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what the difference is. And I, now, guess, I guess if it's like more referential, it would be a meme. Do you have a favorite era? There was like the ones where you would have like a bad luck Brian. That was a whole era. Oh yeah, I do, I do, yeah, I do the like the, the black photo, posters. Yeah, yeah, the black uh, the, the, ba- wow, backdrop and school. then the white outline. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. uninspirational posters. Like yeah. gingers, they have no souls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd say like after that one, and then bad luck Brian and stuff. You had like gifts were a big part of everyday conversation for about four years. I mean, they, they still, still are. are. I, yeah. I'd say they're slightly no. skewing Gifts boomer. Cringe. Gifts yeah. are cringe. Gifts are getting more cringe now. Now it it's static images Gifts are cringe. coming back. I'm, try- I'm trying to think because it depends on if the gif is something that you've seen so many fucking times before. Mm. You know, if, if, it, if it's like a fresh one. Like OC. Huh? Original content. Well, there's the one that's been yeah. going around recently, which is the one where it's Vince McMahon going like- Oh yeah, like this. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's more, I, I wouldn't put that in like gift territory there. That's no. just more of a funny video meme. I don't know. I think reacting to like, how many times when you use Twitter or instant messenger, do you go to the, do you go to a gift reply Fuck these no, days? Never. I mean, I, I've never done that. Okay. But I've, I've just never like- I mean, I did that on like MSN and shit. But. <laughs> so that's like 20 years ago. Yeah, do, you, do, you, do you send emojis when you message someone? I, I emoji, I yeah, emoji. I know you, I know I, you emoji. I love emojis. Do. I know you emoji. Yeah, sometimes. I feel like I shouldn't, but I sometimes do. I do just to make sure that like my tone is conveyed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I look at a sentence, I'm like, it's not getting across, something's missing. And oh, crying, laughing emoji, that's yeah. it. <laughs> I feel like- feels very, It feels very like, uh, like an exchange otherwise, if there's no yeah. emoji constant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, we are sending each other necessary information and that's it. Whereas an emoticon, I feel like 
adds more context, adds yeah. emotion to it. And, My and favorite ones are the ones where like when you're texting someone and you're clearly trying to be sarcastic. But if you just read the text, it doesn't sound sarcastic until you put the skull emoji. Yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Then it, that's the then new it, one. Then yeah. it becomes. I love. Like, I love the skull emoji. Yeah. It's so good. I don't <laughs> think I can emoji. use. Yeah, it. When you put a skull emoji immediately, it's like it's it like, could be the no most. Way. Pos- yeah, it's like it could be the most positive thing, and then immediately it becomes sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm out on that one. I think. Really? It, well, I mean, I like it, but I think if I used it, they'd be like, oh, "Okay, Pete, you're." Nice try, young man. <laughs> and it's like getting carded at the the barcade. No, like, yeah. I trust me. I'm still like had a great dinner, fork and knife, and I'm like, Ray, still no, no, no. That's it. that's a bit exactly. That's cringe, but that's what a calls to me. So right. anything else would be trying too hard to. Do you just see all emojis like that? Uh, no, I mean I, there are some that are universally okay. Like the clapping one can be useful. Yeah, it, yeah, it just depends on the context, but. I'm not really familiar with how to tweet yet, so and I'm not ever going to be. So mm. I just kind of. It's probably better off. To yeah, it's be fine. Honest. I'm okay yeah. with it. I'm yeah. better. Yep. Yeah. But lots changed since the old days. Yeah. Did <sighs> it, do you remember like tech speak at all? Te- oh yeah, lead speak. Good. God, was it called lead speak? Yeah. yeah. Le- yeah One speak. three three seven yeah. speak. Like I like own Zord you and like you. Yeah, all that shit was awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like Dude, yeah. I still remember the PWN pwn. <laughs> yeah, pwn. Oh, yeah. you yeah. got pwned. You got pwned. Yeah, man. Or like those, instead yeah. of pwn, it was yeah. prawn. Prawn. Yeah, it's not still. <laughs> no. I still use that as like a joke. Prawn. prawn? And, yeah, yeah. It's a great P R O N. Yeah, P R zero N. Yeah, if, if, but lead speak was even during the era. Right. We it was always ridiculed. Like, oh yeah, it was yeah. only used der- just derisively to make fun of it in and of yeah. itself. So, I, don't, I don't feel like it was. I feel like there are I think he was making fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I felt like there was a period where people unironically said it, and then after that kind of cycle, like went away. I th- then yeah. people started. I think it had a very short lifespan of where people were actually using it unironically mm. yeah. and a very long lifespan of people using it ironically. Yeah, yeah. that might've been it. Yeah. That's how most of my, my vocabulary forms is just saying shit ironically. And then I'm like, wait, I'm actually, I think I'm doing this unironically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. <laughs> that's, that's so haunting. Like dude was never in my vocabulary. Dude's I never said, great. I never said dude, but I started using it ironically. Because it was just a funny word. Well, that was that was me with bruh. And then now I, 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 I unironically use dude. Yeah, that was me with dabbing. 2016, <laughs> every photo remember, of me is remember me Joey, No way. Yeah, yeah. Remember the Joey dabbing era? Oh yeah. You, did you plank? Uh, I still don't know what that means. I thought that was a sex thing. I thought it's like Prince William likes getting planked. I thought that was a phrase. <laughs> is that not the phrase? What? Or is that like pegged? This? I think Prince it might Williams be like pegged. <laughs> Does yeah, Prince William like I don't out. know what either of, I thought planking and pegging was the same meme. No. <laughs> so I think it's pegged. Yeah, it's oh, pegged. Yeah, yeah, it's pegged. pegged. Whoops, pegged. so I, I, I saw that. <laughs> Did you partake in pegging? No, so I, because I was unfamiliar with both phrases, I just <laughs> not, used them interchangeably. I just never did any of oh, them. I see, smart. I just kind of. I, I just imagine yeah. people being like, yeah, so I saw my friend the other day doing the pegging challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a pretty I, epic video. I, so what, what's planking? Is that where you do the thing on your your wrist? <laughs> Wait, t- oh yeah, actually, well, technically, as well. yes, kind of. Yeah, but the peg, uh, the pegging, the, pl- <laughs> <laughs> the planking challenge was where you would literally just lie down, face down on the ground, like you're Somewhere. a plank of wood. Yeah, and the more extreme of a place you would do it, the the bigger challenge was. And there was like a lot of people who died doing this because they would do them on like- On like train tracks. On like train tracks and like on like the the uh, handrails of like uh, balconies and stuff yeah. like that. And they just fall off. Yeah, what? people yeah. people died doing this. Why are you looking at me like I, you did, said it? Wait, did, I, this also reminds me of when he didn't realize. Oh, this was bad. This sucks. I thought Harambe died of natural causes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I thought it was a tragic story. And then everybody told me he was shot. This is fucking stupid. Yeah, he was assassinated, He was bro. murdered. Yeah. So that's why everyone wanted justice for him. Bro, Harambe would be why, disappointed. How do you think he just died of natural causes? Again, I, I, I knew the child fell in. Yeah. <laughs> And, and what, he just had a heart attack? Yeah, I, thought he died, <laughs> I thought he died of shock. And then everyone was like, they need bigger fences so, to protect these apes. And I thought like he, the, the child fell down and then he was like, <laughs> and, then, like <laughs> and I thought that's what killed him. And then somebody was like, no, they called in like the zoo sniper staff. Yeah, yeah they shot yeah, him. Yeah. I can't believe it. The video is like absolutely horrifying. Like he's literally dragging this child. Well, and uh, <laughs> it's mean, not his fault. Yeah, yeah. It's not his fault. I, I just couldn't believe it because I'm pretty sure I was in Japan during this time. 
And right. so news yeah. travels. Yeah, when was, yeah. When was yeah. that? 2016, 2016, I think. Yeah. And they, so yeah. I missed all of this. I, I missed. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Now that I know you were brutally murdered. Yeah. yeah. He didn't just. Well, since you're in Japan, did you like ever, was Grapekun ever a no, thing here? No, or Coney for president or something. I don't <laughs> know. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, wow. You are just bringing back like a core memory of that. I, I don't even know. Coney 2012. Coney is a corrupted Ugandan warlord. Yeah. What? <laughs> I who, thought it was like a grassroots would, movement in New York hire, or something. Who would hire Ugandan children into his army. Well, yeah. well, I mean, okay. Well, that's, I mean, this is a whole, yeah. yeah. So I thought this was like a Green Party thing in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's like- Tony for president. Yeah. I, I, How did you think this? Well, because- It was Coney 2012 was yeah. the slogan. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But since I only have heard the slogan, I don't have any reference point because it would never come up in day-to-day -day discussions uh, and while you're in Japan. Oh, yeah. And so there is Kone, a- Kone san shiteru. Taihen desu ne. Taihen desu ne. Yeah, and so, you know, you miss a lot of those flashpoint things that are important to a lot of people from, because- yeah, it, But how did you equate heart attack? How did with you Harambe? Heart, yeah, I just thought you, it was a tragic- I don't know, I just made it the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make sense that they would shoot an ape in an enclosure. I just thought that was- that, <laughs> That's that was, why it was a tragedy. <laughs> Yeah, I get. I mean, it yeah. makes sense now, and so is Coney twenty twelve <laughs> a tragedy, yeah. apparently. So like, I'm learning. Well, the and Coney I, story is a little bit different. Well, I'm just yeah. saying these were some sort of meme, or like not memes, but these were moments that people had yeah. in the Western the internet history, world. Yeah, and so, I, I was locked out. So like, in which <laughs> this is gonna sound really. <laughs> in which year did you kind of like sh cut yourself off, or like you know, cut you become cut off? from like internet culture. 2011 because until about 2016. 20, oh, that's yeah. when so many good events happened. It's all well. good. Is that because of Japan? Like moving that's there just and Japan, coming, right? Yeah, when I, my first year I was in Niigata and I didn't even have a phone for my first two months. Like oh, yeah, I just yeah, went yeah. completely off the grid yeah. and I couldn't afford like a uh, like a laptop or anything. I didn't have a computer until I started like Twitch streaming in 2021, yeah. 2020. But I'm also jealous that you get to like relive these memes. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Like in a fresh eye. Yeah, well, it's, it's sometimes tough when you don't have any context and you're obviously wrong. Yeah, because like <laughs> but, so, so many so, funny. so many modern memes nowadays require like oh. 10 different yeah. levels of context oh, yeah. for like a single image. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, there's a lot of like Bring there back are a lot the of one layered memes. There man. are a lot of memes that are like four layers of memes in one. Yeah. yeah. It's like what is this? No. <laughs> well, who no. is this for? So what's, what's the latest meme that you learned of? I mean, it's it's like it's so hard to keep track. I mean, like even the one we just referenced about Vince McMahon, you know, like yeah. you you, yeah. you see them so much now that I feel like I actually kind of preferred not being a part of meme culture. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, there's a real freeing sense of of just not having to reference this for comedy. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like being at a concert or like a sporting event or a Twitch stream where you do feel part of a collective group when mm. you do know what's being mm. referenced. Yeah, yeah. But I, uh, I'm obviously out of that loop. One, one thing I was surprised by is, uh, I because initially you, you didn't talk about it much, but you have a, an intense love for sports. I do, I'm very, love I love sports. sports. What sports? I, I, literally all of them. All? Like I, I really, enjoy following sports. I enjoy playing sports. What's your favorite? My favorite is baseball. And uh, oh, yeah. because okay. that's a, it's America's pastime and it was something that was very closely connected with me and my dad. And so like that has yeah, that yeah, yeah. Fam familial mm. thing. Yeah. But basketball, um, baseball. I've, I've always wondered this phrase, America pastime, American pastime. What, what does that mean? So to put it simply- As an American. Baseball has such a deeply rooted history with when we were coming out of the depression yeah. and you may have heard of a player named like Babe Ruth. He's a famous, there's a candy bar is also named yeah, Babe Ruth. Like, yeah. He was like great, like one of the greatest the baseball, baseball players. He's probably player. arguably the greatest baseball player ever. Right. There's even terms now you'd say it's a Ruthian task, which like a Herculean task. The reason baseball so closely entwined with American history was that one guy became the first famous sports player in American history, so much so, that it, we believed if Ruth can do these things, by <clears throat> God, so can we. Right. And it was like that part of American- It was coming, like motivational. Motivational. Yeah, right. for sure. And so, I mean, baseball for over a hundred years was such a vital part of American culture until the past 30. And it's 
dead. I mean, I feel <laughs> it was kind of the same when baseball was introduced to Japan as well. Very much. Like, because that was, you know, uh, post, you know, World War II yep. Yep. and everything. And, you know, it was before the economic bubble happened. And I feel like a lot of sports that were imported from other countries to Japan that are now massive like baseball, uh, you well, know, were like kind of used to being like, yeah, all right, you know, we got this. Yeah. Yeah, right on. Well, I think that's why that's such a huge kind of like sphere of like American kind of like fascination here with a lot of people from Japan. Oh yeah. I actually, I actually just went to a bar last week <laughs> and the guy running the bar was, uh, the best way I can describe it was just an American otaku. Like, <laughs> that's great though. Like, yeah. and it was like so shy. He was like this old guy, and he just had like baseball cards and everything. Those are called fucking, America booze. I mean, like America <laughs> booze. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I was like watching that game, and I was like, what game? And he was like, all the games, yeah, like every, yeah, game, all every the game, every single game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like in Japan, especially like past five years, like America Core, like that kind of whole like looking oh, at yeah. America through the like rose tinted glasses, mm. like when it comes to, like style and fashion and just like decor and stuff. Yeah. It's huge in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So many secondhand stores are just like selling these like America core items and you show this to an American, they're like, America doesn't there, look like this. <laughs> there is always a sport game happening every single night. I, I, of like a big league, it seems. In America? Like, yeah, Almost yeah. certainly, yeah. It seemed like every single night you'd go into a bar and there would be a game on. It's great. Yeah. And so that that got like through college, the NBA has 40 games and 40 nights during the playoffs. So Jesus. it's a pretty like nostalgic thing to be working on exam papers and just know that you're going to have some sport on in the background. Right. So, yeah. Um, but I mean, obviously when you look at me, it doesn't, I don't give off the vibes that I, I love sports, but I- it is something that I still follow pretty regularly For to sure. this day. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think f liking sports and following sports was kind of like, at least in my age, just kind of like a given. Mm. And it was like more out of the norm to not follow sports. And now I think just because we're so integrated into like, let's say nerd culture, especially online culture. Mm. Now it's, now you're like the outcast if you do follow sports and mm. you are passionate about yeah. sports. Yeah. I, I don't watch a lot of sports, but I really love the, the stories that have been that have taken place in sports, mm, yeah. Uh, even if I don't care about the the, the sport at all, but I, you know, there's like some American stories that from like American football that I've heard that I'm like, that sounds really cool, uh, but I don't care. No, no, the Olympics, <laughs> the Olympics do this the best when they always get some narrative of like this one person swimming goal, and then you get all wrapped into it for that one event. And mm. yeah, American sports are good. It's, it's kind of over like that. In the yeah, Olympics, it is. So yeah. I think the, uh, what like. This is American sports and football in the UK. They're really good at like having these long standing oh, stories that develop over the course of the years. Uh, I watched that Emperor Lemon video about the 72 dolphins or whatever. Oh, the undefeated team. Yeah, yeah, and that was really cool. Like when it's framed in a, a, such a way, it's like, oh, this is great. Mm. Like I, I love watching documentaries and and uh, movies or whatever about, about sport, yeah, yeah. but I don't want to watch it week by week a lot of the time. And that's just, <laughs> that's just the League Legends final. Sometimes it's worth it though. When, yeah. you have, when you have a team, do you, do you have any teams you support? I do, I have my, my beanie that in my, my bag here, it's my Kansas City Royals beanie, which <coughs> is a baseball team. They are the worst team in the majors. <laughs> but I will never forget that in 2015, they, they won the World Series. Mm, and it was uh -huh. the first time in 30 years that Damn. this had happened. And to be at school when this was unfolding and being a part of it, oh man, there's nothing better. And then they immediately went back to the Big worst garbage. team in yeah. the entire world. This episode is sponsored by Vessi. Boys, you guys know that we absolutely love Vessis over here mm -hmm. at Trash mm -hmm. Taste. We all have Vessi shoes oh, for yeah. any time mm -hmm. of the year. Rain, sleet, snow, or shine because they are just that versatile, mm -hmm. waterproof, and comfortable. But did you guys know that Vessi has so much more that they have for you guys to get your hands on right now? Look at these gloves that Connor has on right now. Very Warm, comfortable. Versatile. Very fitting, slim. And I like that they're perfect for every single season. Absolutely. And most importantly, like every other product, they are 100% waterproof, Damn. guys. And here in Japan now, it's turning into winter time. Mm -hmm. Literally, we felt it on the way here, guys. Absolutely. It was raining, it's cold, it's drab, but it's okay because right here, I have their new coats. The Overcast, it's 100% waterproof Ooh. with a stretchy Ooh. shell, soft fleece lining, and a relaxed fit. You look ready for the winter season. And what are those shoes you guys have right there? 
Well, these are the Ultra Joey. I'm glad you asked. These are 100% winter essential, tailored for winter with extra grippy oh. soles. And they have temperature Ooh, ratings that these. can go as low as zero and yeah. minus five during medium activities like walking. So you can head to vessi.com slash trash taste right now and dive into their BFCM sale. That's the Black Friday Cyber Monday sale oh, from yeah. November the 17th to November the 27th. Go to vessi.com slash trash taste and enjoy exclusive discounts during Vessi's biggest sale of the year. Yeah. Back to the episode. What's been like some of the f- most favorite things you've discovered? Because you, you know, talk, every time I talked to you, you had a, like a period, not just with memes, but we've kind of like so many pieces of media mm. that you kind of just like miss in terms of like pop culture. Has there been anything you've discovered that has been like integrated to like now modern pop culture that you're like, damn, this is cool experiencing this for the first time, whether it be like a TV show, yeah, I a think game, that anything. I have not seen a movie in 10 years. Isn't that wild? Like, I, I, no, I, that can't be true. The What's last movie you? I saw was with you in Los oh. Angeles. Oh, yeah. that was the first time I'd been to a theater in ten years. What? Yeah, damn. I, I just, so you must have watched I, only on the airplanes. And I, as a theater that major, counts. Like, <laughs> that I, yeah, I mean, but like, but I don't take that many planes, right? Oh, yeah, so you're, I, you're talking about like going to a theater. I'm talking yeah. about having Netflix oh, yeah. and and oh, yeah. watching a movie on a Tuesday. Okay, before night. the movie you watched with Connor, what was the last movie you watched? <sighs> the one from ten years ago. Oh. Um, it was that Batman movie that was dog shit. And that's what turned me off of- Wait, 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 which one? The final Nolan one. Okay. <laughs> what? Oh, the Bane one. So the Dark Knight Rises? So bad. Yeah, Dark Knight Rises. So bad. It was awful. It was oh so many plot Come holes. Off of it. And and uh, I couldn't that understand- wasn't bad. What is the critical? Oh, you can't understand Bane. Get, get out the Rotten Tomatoes. It was, and like, I like those, I like Christopher Nolan. It was Nolan. okay, it was yeah, okay. I like Christopher Nolan. I like- the other two movies. Those were good, those were very good. I like- You just think the last one was shit? It was not only shit, it was unwatchable. Oh my what? God. Okay. Yeah. What? I would, oh, yeah. garbage. I wouldn't go that far, but it was definitely out of the three Nolan films, it was definitely the worst one. No. And I like all the no. actors in it, but every single moment, it's just like plot. Dude, it, it goes the rate, the, in order, it goes from best to worst. Yeah. Uh, the Dark Knight, The yes. Dark Knight Rises, Batman Begins. No, I thought, oh, be- I like Batman I thought Begins. Batman Begins was I, better I than thought, Dark Knight Rises. I thought Begins was better than Dark Knight Rises, just because oh, Dark Knight yeah. Rises, I think it had so Look many things going so on. So what, people are dumb. <laughs> All the people. Are Those you people saying, are from the Cincinnati Zoo. We have, <laughs> we have 250,000 orders. I mean, look, if you like the movie, it's fine, but they should have called it The Dark Knight Deus Ex Machina because anything that needed to happen at any point to progress the movie just magically happened. I agree. And I can't stand when they do that in it's, drama. It's not, a, it's not like his best movie. Uh, I don't think... Literally play RPG games. That's that's all it is. I am flawed. That is all it is. <laughs> this is Deus Ex fucking. I right know. Here. I understand where I can come across as a hypocrite. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, okay. But uh, I welcome I, to Trash Taste, everyone. Yeah, this exactly. is the first time this has ever happened <laughs> in the history of Trash Taste. Who would have thought? Hot takes on Trash Taste. <laughs> but I think that yeah, I saw that in the theaters and I didn't like it. And so that was 2012. Yeah, that's the last time I went to the theaters. <laughs> I'm just like I'm never seeing a movie again. And I was like I'm good. But I, I will say the thing that I'm happy as a huge theater theater nerd and like, you know, someone who really respects drama. I think we did go through a nice golden age of television that I did miss mm. out on, but I'm yeah. happy existed with your Breaking Bads and your Game of Thrones. Oh, you missed like, Breaking Bads. I, I, I've seen them since, right? Okay. But like, I'm really glad that in, a, in an era now where movies I feel kind of just been rehashed and kind of not a lot of originality these days. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. TV, yeah. not, not, there's exceptions, but no, TV really came into its own with some awesome gripping, Narratives, and yeah. I think that's that's cool. TV has gotten really good in the past like twenty years. It was really yeah. bad from before two thousand and eight or so. Well, it's because it was like the way that they syndicated TV shows. Yeah. It, was like it had to be twenty five episodes. It had to run for so long, and and if the network wanted to change the plot, they could just change the plot, and, and so it's it's changed a lot how TV's made. Mm. Yes, yeah, I, I don't know. So I, 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 don't, I don't know if that's true. I just I'm trying I'm trying to think of like the classic TV shows, but well, look at it like this. You had like things like. Seinfeld or Friends or Malcolm yeah, in the Middle. Most of yeah. the popular shows were Two and a Half Men. Yeah. 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 Well, well, sitcoms, right? We're yeah. long running TV shows. And now I, I guess you have more narratively driven shows as well. Yeah, it's but way I better. guess, yeah, I guess, I guess like before, I'm trying to think of like some- sort of way yeah. more shows get made now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's true. Um, you had The Sopranos, The Wire. Yeah, Those the are wire. the ones that broke the mold. Even when I was still there, they were like doing, that was like HBO only. Yeah. Mm. They were the only people trying to do like- I guess that makes sense. Yeah, then. it's been, but it's been cool to see people really enjoy television again. Mm. Yeah. It's, that's been a, a missing thing. Yeah, we, I mean, I, th- I think the rise of that came from just sh- streaming platforms. So now you, because- 
because the yeah, problem people with, are enjoying well, television, this, but well, not there was this television. Thing, yeah, I know. If you remember, it was like a box set culture where you would buy yeah. the box set yeah. of all of the seasons well, of a show. The, pro- the problem with it. TV shows before is that you had to tune in at the TV at the regular time. Yeah, that's right. Buy the DVDs. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you just couldn't like Every do that. Every ten minutes so, is an ad. So know. now with like online streaming culture, you get <clears throat> you don't have to worry about if the audience has seen previous episodes because you can just assume they have. You yeah, know? I do miss that though. Like, I think the closest, we used to call it water cooler TV shows where you yeah, would stand yeah. around the water cooler and discuss last night's most relevant. Episode of Dexter. Has anyone ever done that? I am, yes. I would argue trash taste is that. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you, like you just filmed no, an episode about that, about Attack on Titan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like water cooler. No, no, no. Has anyone ever, done, because I, I've always heard about people water have, cooler moments. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 100%. If if this it, wouldn't be a term if people hadn't yeah, done it. If we anyone, don't just say, oh, it's the fucking elephant talk. Anyone who oh, works at an office, I think has done that. It's because uh, if you don't smoke back in the day, you yeah. only had the chance the to U- get up and stand around and like slowly yeah. fill up your teacup. No, because in the UK, it was like the making tea talk. That's oh. <laughs> we, we didn't have water oh, coolers. Speaking of, I brought you guys a little taste of England. I forgot what? about that. Oh, what? I, I thought somebody, I, I, I had met a viewer recently and they, they came to Japan and they- right. My grandmother, rest in peace, she did not get shot or anything, but she was 99. <laughs> <laughs> why do you, why do just, you have I, to preface that? She died a thing that Americans have to preface. At 99. She didn't get shot. <laughs> and she was Welsh. And so she's from that village that I can't pronounce. Mirith, um, Ma- Minas Tirith. Tirith. Okay, Minas that's Tidville. Lord of the Rings. Um, and so, but my favorite snack growing up was these these uh, dodgy jammers or- <laughs> Jammy <laughs> dodgers. Jammy dodgers. Jammy dodgers, yeah. Yeah. She got jammy dodgers? So I have- Oh, I have a jammy dodger. Yeah. yeah Good. That's the new packaging. Yeah, it's the new new packaging. Oh. So these I, wait, you had these growing up. Oh uh, yeah. So these so are these are really good. No nasty stuff. We're jammy enough. Yeah. So your cousins really liked you if you had these available at the, the kind of the. These are the best the biscuits, right? right? Not the Jaffa cakes. Not the digestives. The digestives uh, are kind of like the the, the plain, staple. The, the, yeah. I mean, I'll I'll stand the digestives. These are definitely but, more fancy. If you had these, yeah. you were kind of a bit more of a bougie family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Well, should we crack it over? Yeah, let's yeah, have yeah, one. Let's have a I want to have a jammy dodger. dodger. I, I, I forgot. Have you ever had one of these, Joey? I have once or twice, yeah. They are really good with the tea. Aki really likes you these. You do need to have them with the tea, yeah, but yeah. they taste pretty good on their own. I probably should have, uh, I meant to give them to you after the show, but we started talking about it. Right. Right. Let's, let's, let's go. I can, I can have a bit of them. Them. They are goated, uh, as you say. I can't. How do you, I'm not British. What do you mean? You opened it like Oh, I see. I must say, I'm bricked up. I'm all bricked up for these jammy dodgers. There you go, ma'am. These are these are fantastic. There you go. Thank you very much. Actually, oh. I hate raspberries, so I just I'm, I'm down bad right now. What? Oh wait, here's one in here. Down bad, right. I'm down bad. Man, I am so down bad for a jammy dog. Right. Mm. If you hate the Dark Knight Rises and you think that's the most that's like so awful film, mm. what are what are films you actually like them? Give give me give me give me uh, top give me five. What's give, top give five? an insight into Pete's mind of what his tastes are actually like. Top five films. Go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. It's a really really tough question, obviously. But Which I would say like my out. easily first is Ghostbusters. It's my favorite movie. That's a personal That's pick. A classic, though. It's a classic. Yeah. Yeah. And it was at the time the most expensive comedy ever made in the history of movies, which is pretty Damn. pretty wild to think about. Number two is LA Confidential, a fantastic crime noir film that's really, really great. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't seen it, Guy Pierce, Russell Crowe, Kim Basinger, it did, uh, it Michelle did, Pfeiffer. It, it didn't win the Oscar, right? Because I should have. Titanic came out the same uh, year. So yeah. dumb. Um, Am I crazy? The yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, right. Right, right. you're right. It's, it's a travesty. Uh, this one kind of controversial because it's made by a horrific scumbag named Roman Polanski, who is uh, a horrible dude. Yeah. But if you separate art and artist, Chinatown with Jack Nicholson, one of the finest noirs you'll ever see. I happen to prescribe to the fact that Shawshank Redemption is the most rewatchable movie. I, I really like Shawshank. It's a great anyway, movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. I, I, I haven't seen a single person like get bored of Shawshank Redemption. No, I don't think that you can. And so, and then my final one to round out. It's so hard to choose just five, but the theater guy in me would probably say Twelve Angry Men because we're gonna go old school with okay. it, which is just Classic. a nice one setting. But like, that's when you were born, right? I was actually, um, I was 10, so. I had to yeah, study that for school. Let me have yeah. that. Yeah. Let me get, no, I gotta get but, another one out. You know, if we were, I feel like it's like asking someone their favorite game. It's impossible. You gotta go Mass by effects. genre or era. He just answered it. Yeah, he didn't mean that. He's, <laughs> he, was, he said Genshin, I think, under his breath. Uh, he was like Genshin Mass Effect. I said Mass Effect. Even though the third one's like the Dark Knight yes, Rises. Yes, I like the third Mass Effect. Oh my God. That's actually my favorite Mass Effect. We have a real problem here. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is worse than... I think the fucking complaints about the ending were overblown. I don't know. It's people were just like complaining. I still think like, the, obviously like from like, I guess like a critical standpoint, the second one was like the best. The bridge, yeah. Yeah, but I just liked seeing the uh, send off to all the characters. So that's why the third is my favorite. I feel like, did you ever play Mass Effect trilogy? You can skip it. Did you play it? Good no. job. So this is just oh, a one-on-one. Don't skip on one. it. Don't skip it. Don't All I'm going to say is this. To everybody who's played Mass Effect, you know I'm right when I say that how exciting was it to recruit the Rachni Queen or to make all these choices with the Krogan, all of them to be a resource at the war table. Come on. That was, they didn't matter. Nothing, none of your choices mattered choices, in the end. Choices don't matter. I think choices kind of overrated, in my opinion. <laughs> in video games, it's kind of overrated. You've Will convinced you? me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Lost, literally, literally well, lost. Oh shit, episode. I've changed my mind. It's like that Simpsons meme where the guy's like. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a linear story. I don't want to make my own choices. I'm a fucking dumbass. Okay, we, you, we, think, we, you, think you, should, you think I should be trusted to make the best choices in the video games? No. We were, we were literally just discussing this in the last episode. What do you think about multiple endings in video games? Yeah, see, I knew. <laughs> yeah. I knew. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, the, I'm I get to fence. role play my J character. JRPG player, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the best. What, what's the argument against multiple endings? Uh, sometimes that's just shoehorned in. That's all right. Yeah. You don't it's have to do those ones. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I think, uh, like I, I said this in the, like a previous episode where I think if you have multiple endings, it kind of like detracts from the impact of some of the endings you could have. Because, you know, when you have a definitive ending, if you think of like, if you can choose your own ending for a movie, mm -hmm. would you? You know, um, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah definitely. Like, no, I prefer one solid artistic vision. I prefer vision one gone, artistic yeah. vision that the director had in mind. Sure. And by having multiple endings, you're kind of like, I, I guess the storytelling like power of that to me kind of like gets detracted, you know? Usually games have a, a, a canon ending though, right? Like yeah, that's like the, a true ending. Yeah. And so like my best example, oh, we're going so old. It's like <laughs> Chrono Trigger which has Noted. nine yeah. different endings or thereabouts. And each one is unique enough where you would go out of your way to see a different outcome. But you know that there's only one true actual ending. But oh, dude, you know? dude, I played I played it and I got all nine endings. Yeah, me too. And yeah. like, but I feel like- It's a go to game. Yeah, and you can, I think there's usually pretty strong evidence to suggest this is what probably led yeah. to the actual events. Have you ever like read like a choose your own adventure book? Yeah. Or Goosebumps? like a, yeah, remember Goosebumps? Yeah, Goosebumps I was obsessed with yeah. that shit. Watch like Bandersnatch uh, on Netflix. Mm. I still Which, haven't got around to that. I haven't got around to that one. Yeah, it's, it's the fact that- I didn't want to I didn't want to watch something and have to choose. Exactly, right? Exactly. <laughs> so how about this though? Uh, Markiplier goes to space. I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great choose ending. Choose your own adventure. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of my favorite movies that I didn't mention is an old comedy called Clue, like the board game Cluedo. Okay. Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't sound like it'd make for a great movie, but one of the coolest things that it did in the theaters was depending on which theater you went to, it had one of three different endings because like the board game, there's no real, you ending. know, when you play, it always yeah. comes yeah. out different. I think that's an awesome that's idea pretty cool. to have an, uh, a random ending depending on which theater you go to. That's, I thought that was, it's really great. I think that sounds awful. You should try I, I, mean, I think that movie. sounds it's, awful. It's great, it's a great that's, movie. That's kind, that kind of sounds cool. That sounds actually. like a that's, a that's a great way to get people to pay for, to watch the movie three times. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. I, I think to that's me that smart. more sounds like a gimmick than it does a kind of like artistic- Hey, vision. take my money, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> It's hard that's, to convince you guys. Me. That's just me. It was really amazing. fun. It's a really great- That's very end. smart. Yeah. yeah, it was really cool. And that's like the 80s, so they were innovating. <laughs> yeah. Is there any games you like that aren't RPGs lately? Yeah, well, I do believe that one of these games that's sweeping the world is this one where you match fruits together, oh right? Oh my god! And I played it for like three hours and set the high score out of everybody that we know. And so, that what's the problem? Why can't you do well? It's I, so well, easy. You, you uh, it pisses me off how close you were to greatness and you stopped. Yeah, I don't need greatness. I already it's defined with the high score. You was could enough. have got the fable double sweeper. Yeah, I don't need you didn't yeah. do it. Uh, didn't do you want to explain what this is? So basically, it's a, fucking, it's a child's game. Yeah, you, stack up, you stack up different fruits. You match two strawberries, you get a grape. Two grapes, <laughs> Mina, Mekon, or whatever. Yeah. And all these bozos are trying their best to beat it. I needed that game for like an hour. It's really funny watching these like fully grown ass adults just like playing this children's game. I've streamed it for like over like 30 hours. Face. Yeah. But for me, the, actually to answer your question truthfully, every genre on the table, I get labeled a lot as a retro gamer because I like- Your retro. Yes, <laughs> this is it, this is actually it. Yeah. But uh, I actually prefer, you know, a 
lot of the modern games as well. So it's like anything in all. Like oh Suki game. <laughs> like, well, not that one, but yeah, it's like, uh, I just love video games and it's, it's what, what are some of the modern games then? Uh, what's come out recently that's been pretty good is things like Lies of P or, you know, Spider-Man 2 or what are the big games that have come out that have, because this year has been pretty bleak. Uh, yeah, well, has it? Well, ba Baldur's so. Gate three, you played Baldur's a lot Gate of three was fucking great. Uh, Legend of Zelda. Um, I thought Legend of Zelda I hated that game. was mm, Breath of the Boring, uh, yeah, Wild Brent. Two. That, that right. is that is an L take. That's <sighs> such an L take. Wait, what? That's all right. I I, I I'm fine with dying on that. Hill. I don't fuck with it's the fine. whole building on the new one. I, I don't think either. I don't like it. No, the building is the best part. I don't like that. It, and it's yeah, like it's like Minecraft. I hate that. I hate that. It, if I want to play Minecraft, play Minecraft. No. <laughs> I feel like if you, I feel like we talked about this last time too. Oh, I you feel did like say I, Breath of the Boring. I, I feel like if you replace <laughs> Link with any other character, it's it's going to be the same great game that it already yes. is. But that's not a Zelda game. It's just. Oh well, no, I don't include it as a Zelda game. Well, there you go. So yeah. that's, if we're going to not. But it's still it, a great game. It is a great, I mean yeah. like, yeah, but I think it's like, it's, it's kind of just cashing in on putting. You know. There's 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 Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, and then there's every other Zelda game in <laughs> that's, my mind. That's that's exactly how I feel. It's so yeah. sad for me, but yeah, I think like Baldur's Gate three was great, but these are RPGs though. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's still <laughs> RPGs. These are yeah, yeah. Off like, modern I, RPGs. I, I, but I mean, like, I'm just trying to think. Elden Ring was last year. Yeah, Elden Ring was last year. I feel like this year, year has yeah. been kind of. I, I, feel like, I, I feel like, I don't know. Hey, Super Mario RPG remakes coming out though. I will be playing that on Let's Sunday. Go. That's coming out. In, oh, it comes, this, comes out this week. This, this weekend. weekend. Oh, wow. It's going to be hope, amazing. I hope it's good. I, I, it's it, not, it, it almost feels good. like they're, there's like, my my backlog of every time I complete a game, I'm. It seems like every time I'm just on the cusp of completing a game, there's a new like fucking massive game that comes out. At least this year, and um, like Persona I, Three remake. Yeah, they all make a, well. they, all the game studios Woo. make an agreement to time out their games. Yeah. to get uh, gone. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I feel like the the tenor of this episode has been I have really horrible takes on everything. No, is that a normal trash taste thing? That's that's mean, that's you, that's, you fit right in. Okay, they've heard all of our opinions, so we just want to you know want to ask about your some new. Fresh bad takes yeah, about we need good some new material, and good games. Yeah, no, we want we want the bad takes. But good takes are boring, Pete. Good takes mm, are boring. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> wild though to to think about. Your Harambe take is definitely my favorite though. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even a take. Yeah, that's I don't think that's fair to call that a take. Yeah, but it's I a funny. Can't believe bit. that happened. I'm very upset. <laughs> Natural causes. Natural causes. Died of a heart attack from that poor child who fell in. I imagined like in my mind, Harambe was wearing like some bathrobe and it was cinched up and it was. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> and it just just died. It's like, damn! I can't believe this child what fell the in. Fuck? Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Well, I guess you are right. I don't know. Nothing's been out, man. Yeah, this year has been pretty boring for video games. I think because I don't care about Spider Man. I don't care I about Spider Man. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I heard it was like just the first game DLC. I mean, sure. I mean, I played it for the story, and yeah. that was pretty much All it. Right. Um, <laughs> Sometimes more of a you good could, thing. Do you count Final Fantasy? Like, that's crazy. Do <laughs> <laughs> you count Final Fantasy 16 yeah, as a big release? But we're not yeah, counting yeah. RPGs, right? Like, yeah, we're not we're counting RPGs. But that's RPGs. the thing. This year and early next year is that's all, all RPGs. Yep. This is like the year of RPGs. That's, that's all I want. We are eating yeah, shooters good. are kind of out now. Yeah. Star yeah. Wars, Jedi Survivor. I've been playing that. Yeah. Yeah. Wars. Street, Street Fighter 6. Oh, I, that would probably be- Oh, that was a big release. That was probably my yeah. favorite game this year. Oh yeah? yeah? Yeah, that looks insane. As a consumer, I like to watch it, we I like to it. follow it. Yeah, no, no, I mean, I, <laughs> I mean like- <laughs> we, we got to we, play it first. We played it, but I've not like gotten into it. Oh, I see, I, mean? I see, yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's a fighting game. Yeah, yeah fighting game. Fun. Fighting games are like, obviously it's its own genre, but I feel like out of every genre, it's one of the hardest genres to get into. But I know? think Street yeah. Fighter Six did make an effort to-, to Oh like, yeah, like the easy and, Yeah, the combo, modern right? controls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, games are out this year. It's kind of a, it's a great time to be a streamer. Fucking watermelon game, man. <laughs> eh? Yeah, I'm not too concerned with that. I already beat it. Oh, so, yeah, gosh. it's easy. And uh, I wish I could beat it. <laughs> I will say, like, one thing that I'm, I'm not proud of much. Obviously, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have a lot of things that I hang my hat on. But I am glad that all these years, starting with like the Commodore and the Atari and the Nintendo. Uh, when we were at Twitch Rivals, we had to play that party animals game. Oh, that was game. so fun, yeah. And I still feel in these these ancient hands, if you give me a <laughs> controller or a game, 
I can adapt quickly enough. And I'm still- You're making it sound like you're like an old grandmaster or something. I'm telling you, man, it's a young man's game. Like there's His no- third eye opens. <laughs> like. It does. Yeah, we, we, uh, we competed in a ultimate Twitch Rivals. It was really fun to be fair. Right. Uh, and uh, we had to do a series of different like casual things, mm. yeah. like physical and game. And Party Animals was one of them. And all of us were pretty bad except for- We never played. Yeah, we had a guy called Five Up with us who was pretty good and kind of awesome. helped us. Uh, and uh, we ended up winning. The, first place. Yeah, we got first Damn. place in that. Yeah. In that event. In and that then event. We, we, oh, we didn't then when the physical stuff, I that's no. when age, the mind was willing, but the <laughs> body okay. was unable. It's okay. But the, the crazy thing is like, I, I do feel getting to play games and just still having that because like esports players whatever they're like 22 and they're retired they're like yeah. i can't yeah. play rocket league anymore uh, 22 is like old. ancient yeah you need to be you need to come up when you're like 16 17. Exactly. Well, this is the oldest uh this league of legends competition is the oldest it's ever been the yeah. players so what's the average age 19 i think it's like 25 now <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, League of Legends. <laughs> 12. <laughs> That's a Fortnite competition. I mean, yeah. I mean, League of Legends has gone to a point now where um, I'm not sure how many new players it's getting. It's a lot of the older players. Yeah, they, they, the, the old players just keep coming back every time. Right. And uh, we had we had one of we had one person in the League uh, Worlds final this year that was like a dad. It was like in his thirties. <laughs> he was getting his ass clapped by like everyone. Oh, <laughs> Which oh, there, is we, there we go. According to a survey conducted by ESPN in 2018, the average age of professional League of Legends esports players is 21.2 years old. That's crazy. But now in this this world is uh yeah it's a 24 to 25. Yeah, it's generally older, which is kind of cool. I, li yeah. I like that it's. It's getting to that point now where people have been in the esports for so long and they're aging, yeah. still keeping up. Yeah, with kids who are. <laughs> 19. <laughs> you, got a, you got a chance, Pete, you got a chance. Well, to me, it's like, I just- it's, are, you, are you into competitive games? Not particularly, but I, I am JRPG competitive. Player, of course he yeah. Is. yeah. But so, like, do, do you have a he, competitive he side? Is competitive. I get competitive. Do, do you have a competitive he side? He gets very fucking competitive. Are you kidding me? This man's well, competitive. Well, I mean, it's like, it sucks when you're so good at a lot of the games that I play. No, I'm kidding, but I- <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you one of those motherfuckers who opens up like, uh, you know, like a game of Overwatch. No, he bides like, his time. And he like, waits guys, for the game. If, if, if let's just try our best, guys. No, it's okay. No, 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 it's no, okay, no, guys. Or do you have like a toxic gamer side to you? I don't have a toxic gamer side. So well, he's very gracious. And then the <laughs> moment he knows that he can kick your ass, he'll go full <laughs> toxic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fun. You're so bad. Why are like, you so bad at the game? I just can't understand how bad you are. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense that you play so long. No, I think like for me, it, in, when you have a group of friends who play video games back in the day, mm. yeah. there's always one of you who are going to be fundamentally better than the rest of the group. Sure, And yeah. it's not fun to lord that over each other and try to do like, yeah. let's play Goldeneye where I always win first place. Mm. Or yeah. we're going to play Halo where I'm always on the stacked team, right? Yeah. So for me, that's always been kind of the role that I've been in. But when you play other groups who are competitive, you quickly learn that you're at the mid-level of like gaming. Yeah. So I feel like I've never really purposely tried to be in a, I was in like a Team Fortress classic clan when I was 15. Like, nice. you know, Hell yeah. the old game that was like- Number one? Oh, no, no, we were, it was so different back then. You had to like organize when to fight each other and you had to get on Roger Wilco or Ventrilo, which were old team speak. Um, oh my God. See, team, team speak feels ancient to me. Yeah, team speak okay. already team feels speak didn't ancient. exist. There was no built in clients. And so you had to do things kind of very differently because there was nothing in the game itself to set it up. Yeah. But other than that, being competitive, I just, I just really like the challenge of applying all the games I've played. I can see patterns relatively quickly. And I, I find that to be very exciting. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. <laughs> this is so bad. It's like, for a man yeah. who could, for a man who could recognize patterns quickly, but thought the Harambe died of well, I, I feel like I put my some, stat points. Are, in you just like, are you just like gaming Rain Man right now? I'm like, it's like, yeah, just get like, a controller. You're like. <sighs> Well, it's, it's really, yeah. I can't stop this power. Oh my I, God. No, but what it is is, it's it's something that I'm so thankful. It's so cool to have grown up with them all. Oh, totally. Like to not have to come into like my first console as a 360. Yeah. I can't imagine not starting. Yeah, you've from the literally beginning. been there since the beginning. That's Very that's start. dope as hell. It's pretty awesome. Like, yeah, I mean, that I is cool. Trade that for much. Yeah. Absolutely. What do you think of the modern gaming industry then? I think it's it's really great. I think that what I like the most is the how indies have come up because I think indie developers are basically people my age 
who really miss a lot of the games that yeah. we used to play. The yeah. old style of games. And so they're yeah. saying, well, we can still innovate on the limitations that the old consoles had and make these cool games. Mm. Yeah. And then you get some really cool AAA titles here and there that are still mm -hmm. fun to kind of, you know, put some time into, but yeah, it's a good place, I think. It's, it's yeah. like, the thing about AAA games is that it just feels like it's, you know, it's kind of like watching a blockbuster movie. You yeah. don't get as much personality, not as much like, individual expression, but you know, it's it's like nice to like get up, you know, kind of like feel like you're like getting the popcorn out and just watching a blockbuster movie in a yeah. theater. Lately right? the meme is that all indie games are roguelikes. Yeah, it is a big trend, right? There's a huge portion of that. <laughs> yeah, side, side scroll roguelikes. Side just scroll, yeah. just any roguelikes, mm. card deck, card yeah. builder road li roguelikes or whatever, but you know, I, mm. I mean, it's just cause obviously that given the tools, there's only like, you know, it's a little harder to develop certain things. Yeah, I love roguelikes, I'm not complaining. Yeah, I, I like roguelikes right, right. too. I like but roguelikes I, too. I feel like those are, <clears throat> it's really hard to create something narratively strong that has a specific vision. Yeah. And roguelikes allow a lot of player and creator expression, mm. but I still really like, like it's all RPGs, but like Chained Echoes and Sea of Stars, which are love. made by like one guy mm. or a team of mm -hmm. two or three. That's pretty impressive that there's like one, single game there. Inscription, I liked a that lot. That was a great Inscription, Intel part. Really, really, really like, it, yeah. Well, yeah. That part one's cool. amazing. Part two's pretty good. Three's, <laughs> yeah, three's pretty bad. But yeah. part one is amazing. Part one's amazing. I was wondering, was there a moment where you got like interested in acting? Because I, I, you have, when we've talked at least, you haven't talked about much about like your path into trying to be an actor. I just know you tried to be one. Well, tried. Uh, there was some successes in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, not a complete flame out where I just tried. And um, yeah, it was it was during it was during middle school and like high school when I had a lot of trouble because I wasn't in the normal classes for uh, different reasons. But yeah. I found theater as like a thing that where I could be really challenged with some of the. It's really hard to be a, a stage actor because right. oh, I'm sure. Yeah. And, and I took it really seriously. And so after high school where I, I learned that, oh, it's not just shouting when you're angry or emoting when you're sad. Yeah. Yeah. When I went to college, it was pretty formative. And I, I worked, actually, I got hired at a radio station as a DJ, like right out of high school. And that was really hard because the people I worked with were so awful. It was probably the worst oh, job wow, experience really? I've ever had. Mm. Well, uh, how were they awful? Just, well, just rude. This is a, this is a six minute story. Is that okay? Yeah, uh, it's yeah. Take place. That's, that's All right. Right. yeah, yeah. I wish it had a funny ending, but oh well. So basically <laughs> I was taking a broadcasting class in college and there was this amazing weatherman for the local news who was teaching it. And his advice was like, if you ever get your foot in the door, mm. don't take it out because these opportunities are hard to come by. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And then there was a radio station in Kansas City called Z95.7, today's hit music, shit music. And then uh, you, they came into our, our class to give like the, the morning show DJ. And the morning shows in America are the most popular yeah. because yeah. you get like, you're in traffic and it's a lot of like joking and talking yeah. and less yeah. music. So they lots came in. Lots of fart sounds and Lots sound of effects. fart sounds yeah. and sound effects yeah. and yes. GTA radio, but really yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And he came in and I was, something came up where he was like, yeah, it's pretty hard to get into radio, but if you do, it's a lot rewarding. And I was like, well, I kind of want to get into it. And he was like, sorry, kid, we're not hiring. I was like, well, I just want to come in, like see the studio. Can yeah. I just come see it? Mm. He was like, all right, why don't you come in next Tuesday and you can take a look at how we do the morning show. And it's like a thing. And I was like, cool. So I went in the next Tuesday and I thought it was amazing. They had like these huge ass boards. Wow. They were telling jokes the whole time. There was Dave and Shorty and a guy named Twiggy Fat Sax, which is a horrible name, but like- <laughs> that really his that name? Was, Twiggy, yes. Uh, this is, none of this is made up. And uh, at the very end of their episode, they said, well, we do have a special guest here today. Uh, some kid from the, the local community college. Do you want to come in and say something? And I had like, I had to take the extra mic and I was, and I made like, I don't know what joke I made, but I said something that was funny and everyone kind of laughed and the show ended. And I said, that was amazing. Uh, and the guy said, you know, why don't you come back again on Tuesdays and Thursdays every week, you can intern for us and kind of learn the ropes. Oh, and I was cool. like, oh. I was like, okay, yeah. once you get your foot in the door, you can kind yeah. of do this. Mm, yeah. So I started coming in every Tuesday, Thursday, and then something happened where they, uh, the mid, <laughs> the mid afternoon guy or girl had to go to a different station or moved out. So they had to replace that person and Twiggy Fat Sacks took the, took the opportunity. <laughs> so now I get moved into his position, which is the third mic. Yeah. Normally I would have to stand there oh, for the no. entire time. And if I had a funny joke that I felt would be 
ready, I'd go like this and I'd be like, joke. And then yeah. they'd take it away. Yeah. That was like really high. Sorry, Connor. That was okay, really no. high Please leverage. Please do. Please though. do. Take both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, but then you're really worried like this joke better be good because you're, you're requesting like the 19 the year old wants to come in yeah. and say like yeah. a funny thing. Yeah. And uh, then I got moved to the third mic, which was on all the time. And I was also the phone guy who I would take like C95.7. This is Kramer. That was my nickname. My call name was Kramer. Oh, so you were like on the air whilst also taking uh, some On calls. that one, I could hit a button to mute my, oh, my wow. mic too. Ooh. So I'd, I'd have to take the call and they'd say like, yeah, I want to tell Dave that I want to have his babies. And you're like, okay, that's not, thank you very much for calling. You yeah. know, whatever the call ins. And if it was a good call, I'd push it forward and they would tell Take it on the air. All right. Yeah. So there was one disturbing trend that started to, to, to develop while we were on this morning show. One, it was, imagine though, if you're like in Melbourne or London and your voice is heard to like your buddies at like 18, 19 years old. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is like a crazy yeah, opportunity, wild, right? Yeah. yeah. And like my mom would be listening at her, her dentist office and she'd be like, that's my son Kramer. And it was really like <laughs> pretty awesome. And, but they started to really use me as a punching bag really, really regularly. Right. And then it became like, I can take it. Let's make self, you know, self deprecating humor. I can handle that. And then it started getting kind of offensive. So anytime I would say any kind of joke, like they'd be like, who's the loser who like takes baths. And I'd be like, I, that's the, the lead in. Yeah. I take baths. Every time I spoke, they would hit this sound bite. And this is kind of offensive. I'm sorry to anybody. They'd say mm -hmm. you fairy, you company man which is a movie quote from like Al Pacino. Right. And it was a derogatory slur to make it sound like I was not manly or whatever the joke was. Right. And so then it, that started. And then each day it got worse with like making fun of me. Let's, they did a win a date with Kramer. Like, you know, and then we'd have like the camera crew and they set it all up. And then they had the camera show there and I showed up to the thing and they made a big joke saying, nobody signed up for it. You're a loser. Like, and then right. I was like, okay. And they never even put it out, right? So now I'm like, all right. What the fuck? This is really That's bad. fucked up. It yeah. was, but this was the, this was like 2003. So I decided I have some dignity left. I, yeah. I probably should mm -hmm. quit. And so I said, listen, I really appreciate your guys' opportunity. I learned a lot being on the radio business this past year. I, I think it'd be best if I focused on my studies. And they yeah. were like, that's good because we were going to fire you. And I was like, okay, well then that's that's great. All right, so. What a bunch of assholes. I know. And so, but I'm so young, right? Yeah. And yeah. I don't know how to, to deal that with. That would be stressful. Yeah. yeah. Dude, it was crazy. So I remember they said, here's the idea that we've got. We're going to do a two day event where you get made fun of a lot. And we're going to, we're going <laughs> to pretend that you blow up on the air and we're going to get suspended for a weekend so we can go to Vegas to see a Britney Spears concert. What? And at first, I, I, I was pretty pressured. I was like, okay, that sounds good. You know, this, okay, let's just do that. And so the first day we do it, I play the part as I knew I could perfectly. I said, you guys, I've had enough of every day. You're playing these sound drops. Or you're making fun of me or yeah. win a date with Kramer. Why don't you win a date with go yourself? You know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And it went really well, except I had an email that was like Kramer at Z95.7.com. For about a year, I had like three emails ever sent to that address. And they were all like, uh, can you ask out Shorty for me? I think she's a babe. <laughs> and after that episode, I had thousands of emails of people hating me, saying that I didn't appreciate this golden opportunity to be on the, and I was like, it's a joke. Everybody, I thought this was obvious. Uh, my mom was concerned. She was like, what happened? It sounded so real. And you so, acted too good. I'm yeah. too good. So <laughs> you, you were too good. He's too good. Yeah. too good. So I told my acting coach, I was like, dude, I'm pretty nervous. I was like, this is not going well. I have people calling my home phone saying that oh, I'm damn. ungrateful. I don't even know how they found me. Yeah. I'm not in the phone book as Kramer, you know, but like, <laughs> and so I said, he was like, yeah, dude, it's fucked up. It's dumb. You know what, if I, if I was you, I'd go in there tomorrow and I'd be like, fuck you. I'm not doing your stupid gag and you can go fuck yourself. Yeah. And I was like, go in there and say, fuck you and go fuck yourself. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> no, I couldn't. I, I, I try. So I went there and I was like, all right, it's my last day. I'm supposed to do this one last bit. <clears throat> And somehow I did get the courage to to say no, but I've never had such a dry mouth in my entire- oh, it must have been terrifying. Yeah. Just yeah. completely- Because you know, you've obviously raised your whole life being like, don't 
talk back or this. Yeah. You know, and you're authority. in radio, yeah. right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This to me at the time symbolized some sort of like gateway, yeah. gateway, gateway or mm, opportunity. Foot into the door. And I wanted to to transition to sports radio. And so mm -hmm. I was asking for like a recommendation so I can intern at the, nice, yeah. the AM station. Yeah. And I go in there and they go, okay, man, so we're going to do this thing. And then we're going to, uh, we're just going to have you leave. But thanks so much. And I was like, there's like two or three minutes before the show starts. And I was like, <clears throat> <laughs> they're like, are you all right? And I was like, yeah. Uh, I was like, um, actually, I'm not going to go through with it. And they're like, you're not going to go through with what? You, you can't work here anymore. And I was like, no, I think this, I think that, I think that this, this joke is stupid <laughs> and I don't want to do it. And they were like, I'm actually getting nervous now remembering. Yes. Oh, and right. like, and, but they were like, they, the girl tore into me and she was, she was really, really ruthless. She was like, honestly, you've never had an ounce of talent for this profession. And we only kept you until we found someone better. And I was like, that's fine. I'm not doing this stupid joke. Yeah. And she was like, you will never, ever work in this town again oh and i was like that's fine you know? <laughs> i was like oh that's not good i kind of uh, live here i'm very really young and i was like that's fine and, you know and then i was like it's not worth it because I, I just don't understand why can't you guys say we were just joking thank you so much peter for your hard work good luck at the university yeah, yeah. why can't we have like a a, mm. a nice thing and they were like and i saw dave he took the the volume control and he's like we just can't trust you today. And he's, I was like, Fuck you, you know, yeah. I was like, what a loser. And I was feeling really down. And they, uh, they told me to go sit in the uh, corner and they went live. Like I was like some bad kid or something. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was sitting there and, um, they had to go to commercial break and they were kind of just doing the show as normal. And someone called in and they, they put him on, but not on air. Yeah. It was just Z95.7 mm -hmm. what? And it was my teacher. He didn't know I was there. And right. he was like, yeah, you guys are fucking lame asses. And I think all of you, especially you, Dave, you fucking hack, you're a bunch of losers. Yeah. And for you to take advantage of that young man who gave you a year of your time, you know, you can go fuck yourself. And that moment, I felt like somebody had my back. <laughs> oh, this is like a film. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, dude, yeah. it was crazy. And like, and he was, they're like, you know, we're not going to put, he's like, I don't want to be on the fucking air. I have some dignity. I don't want to be on Z95 point fuck off. And I was like, <laughs> damn. So when, when that guy was going hard and then I, I, I was just like, fuck it, I'm out. I left. Yeah. Yeah. And I just walked out and like it ended. And I thought for sure, well, that's it. it. That's yeah. acting. Ripperonis. Ripperonis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I felt um, after that, I felt like embracing failure was actually more of an important lesson absolutely. to learn yeah, than it is to earn people's like ovation and, and like. Oh, totally. Yeah. So by embracing failure, I maybe should have overcorrected and not embraced it that much because for the next four or five years, I put myself in any possible acting situation, good or bad, so that I, not like porn, but like, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, not like, yeah. not like porn, but like any kind of opportunity to, to, to grow as a, as an actor mm, mm, and yeah. stuff like that. And I had a lot of fun doing that, but that one thing changed everything when I, when I got, did you never work in that city again? I actually did work in that city yeah. again, well, you yeah. bastards. And, uh, <laughs> and I went on to, um, yeah, you always, a bunch of stuff. yeah, you always rec recount the story about how you, um, one that's quite significant acting. I did. I got to perform in the Kennedy Center on uh, in this? Washington DC. Oh, and cool. so yeah. Oh, awesome. There was a <laughs> this is actually kind of awkward as well, but I'll tell it. So uh, there <laughs> was a <laughs> well no no it's it's a cool story, but like yeah. there was a there was a contest called the K Irene Kennedy Casey Kennedy Center Kennedy Center American Acting Theater Festival. Well, what what age is this around? This is all college. Oh okay. And it's the entire United States. And I would argue it's probably the most prestigious competition that you can do in college right. yeah and no one from our school both my community college and my college had ever won it we'd never we gotten runner-up a couple of times oh, wow. and so uh, for a whole country for the region oh, so there's region, five right. different regions and we represented the kind of the midwest region which included <laughs> wisconsin <laughs> chicago illinois ohio oh, so you were just so saying you were the minnesota so you are the representative for the midwest is the what midwest. i'm hearing was that, like a competition? was that like a competition as well to get to that point so yes so wow. I, i'm not explaining this, this is like well. an anime tournament yeah, so, yeah. This, is like a sports, this is like a sports anime we gotta win regionals ma <laughs> we can do it let me let me so let me scale it back so okay. if you're yeah. in a show a okay. college show you'll have an adjudicator come watch it and the director chooses one actor and the adjudicator chooses one actor to then go on to 
this regional festival. Mm. And I was selected for five years in a row because I'm Wow, wow. Me, and I lost every single time the first four years. <laughs> so <laughs> what, what, like, did you, what did you have to do? So you go there and you have a, to do a two minute scene with a partner. Um, that's It can be self-written, it can be from a famous play, it can be whatever, it can be a musical, it can mm -hmm. be Shakespeare, whatever you want. It's actually three minutes. The first round is three minutes. If you make it to semifinals, they take like eight, five or 600 different pairs and then they narrow it down to 32 or 64. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then you do another two minute piece. So you do a three minute and a two minute. And then if you make it to the finals, you add a one minute monologue, right? right. Mm. So on my fifth year, I was <clears> like, okay, this is getting embarrassing. I've been nominated a lot. Oh, you never got to the finals. I made it to semis once. Oh, I see. I see. Right. And, and at the school, at that time, a lot of people looked up to me as an actor because I took it really seriously. Mm. Yeah. I may not have been the most naturally gifted, but I would really- You put the work in. I yeah. put the yeah. work in. <laughs> so I think a lot of people really had high expectations. Right. So I, I decided that for the final year, I got this amazing partner named Callie and she's such a great actress, but she was really young. Yeah. She was like 19 or 20 and I was like 23 at the time. Right. And so you're asking someone really new to theater to take some big risks as we do these scenes. Mm. So the first scene was really easy. It's the funniest piece of literature I've ever performed in. And it was written by my old acting coach. So it's this guy meets this girl and story as old as time but the whole point is for the first minute and a half two minutes their inner monologue is talking instead of them directly so he's saying right. oh my god it's her mm. and then she says it's him yeah. and it all leads up to their initial awkward conversation mm. easy clear made mm. it to semis we knew we were going to make it to semis this scene was perfect right the problem was it was so funny that we didn't have a contrasting a piece <laughs> yeah. strong enough so I talked to this old wizened like Jedi acting coach and I was like, I just don't trust this second piece that we have. And she goes, I have just this scene for you, but you have 20, 20 hours to get it into shape. And I was like, all right. And she's like, it just came out. So I know the playwright personally. I'll email him and ask him if we can get permission to use his, his works. Mm. And I was like, okay, this was a really interesting play called Red Light Winter and it's extremely graphic. And the problem with this scene was the character I played starts with him with a girl downstage looking up at him saying, I love you. And he says, you've never loved me or something like this. Yeah, yeah. And they have this brief tussle of intense emotional connection of making out. This is in front of an audience. And then he takes her behind a table, not so different than this, <laughs> lifts up her shirt and uh, spits in his hand and drops his... And he, well, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then, yes, there's actually kind of key. Um, then while <laughs> while this is happening, right, this thing, his phone goes off and he covers her mouth and he takes the call and it's from his wife mm. saying that he'll mm. be home later. And then the real acting, the tough part is, is the girl has to take this information, this betrayal and visualize it for everybody to see. Plus all the risque stuff we're doing. Yeah. yeah, He hangs up the phone, finishes whatever that task was, looks at her as he's belt, you know, and he says, I told you I didn't love you. And that's the end of the scene. Right. Big contrast, mm, huge yeah. contrast. <laughs> Whiplash for the yeah. the audience members, but but a but, great way to show right. Yes, yeah. he, he was down bad. He was down bad. He was down bad. He was down bad. You had to be bricked exactly. up for this. Bricked up, down bad. All these terms come full circle. And uh, the 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 key part of that scene actually is she does have HIV, and now he in turn will get oh, it. Wow. So that's not displayed in that particular scene. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then we did, we made it to finals. So now it's down to the final 16 people in our region. And this is like, we're in uncharted territory. Can we be one of the two winners to ever make it out of this region and go to Washington, DC? Midwest. Well, for our school, yeah, the entire Midwest. Wow. And so, mm. cause two people go from each region. And uh, it was like, okay, this is it. And we drew numbers on which, order we got to go in yeah. and I drew 15 out of 16, mm. which I loved. I was like, you get to watch. <laughs> I don't watch anything, but I want to be near the end because I know that those scenes that we do are so powerful. It leaves an yeah. impact. Yeah, very much. And the monologue. So we go to the, we start the thing 
And I actually was so confident that I slept for about 40 minutes during the first round. So I was just like, calm down, rest. And my partner, poor Callie, was just sweating. Sweating and terrified. <laughs> so I'll never forget it though, man. We, we went out there and it was in Kansas, actually. The regional that year is in KU. So it was my own backyard. I had yeah, a chance to right. defend home turf. And we walk out there and there's 2,000 people in the auditorium. And they're all, they've heard rumors of, some of the, I heard about this scene. So it gets dead silent. And that's already extremely exciting. So you're yeah. like- <laughs> Everyone's anticipating. Oh man, it was <laughs> so, you could feel the place just ready to go. So I was terrified, you know, but you gotta own it. Gotta so I said, it. Mm -hmm. hello, my name is Peter. This is my partner, Caliant. We'll be doing three pieces for you today. And inside, I'm just, I'm all bricked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I'm down bad. Yeah. Yeah. You're emotionally bricked uh, yeah, yeah. up. Emotionally, yeah. Yeah. Then in the finals, you had to perform three scenes. We yeah. had to do the, the, wow, the comedy. The, the, yeah, it's yeah. a six wow. minute, and it's ruthlessly timed. If you go over time, somebody yeah. will put their hand up at 15 seconds, and then they'll stand up and say, finish. And if you go over time, you're disqualified. Oh, wow. shit. So this is where, thank you for, it's like you're helping me tell this yeah. story. Well, I'm trying to visualize yeah. just so I can get my, the head, same headspace. That'd be awkward if they shout finish at like the second scene. I know. Just, but I, I presume that's to make sure, because obviously if you were to- <laughs> finish, finish. <laughs> finish. Obviously, obviously timing is a huge part of acting and, and yeah. being on cue and on, on time is yeah. important. Yeah. Right? So I'm guessing that's why, right? There was one problem though, we didn't realize was the, the comedic scene was so funny with 2000 people. Oh, we had to pause for laughter. Oh. So that did, so I think they actually give you a 10 second grace period. So like, you know, whatever they, whatever. But so like we do the first scene, it kills. People are going crazy with laughter. People, are, there's already like tons of cheering. And then we got to put that behind us and we have to do that really serious scene. <laughs> yeah. Yo, my God, dude, when that- The whiplash. <laughs> dude, you could not hear anything during that scene, yeah. Yeah. dead silent. One guy in the back was like, <coughs> you know, <laughs> and it was just, it was dead. And then yeah. uh, I had like friends and family watching and they didn't know I was gonna do this scene where I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And it's just, and I, but it's fine. Cause it's, it's theater. Yeah. Yeah. And, exactly. and so, yeah. and then we did a monologue and I know that Callie went off stage and I had to do a, it was a really great place, uh, play called um, Recent Tragic Events about 9-11. And uh, it was a, a great monologue. It was- Wait, you did a nice. It's a good play though. It's a it's oh, yeah. a really powerful play it's the about- the most American thing I've ever yeah. It was really, it was still relatively topical yeah, yeah, right, back. Yeah. It was like within 10 years of this. Well, you said 2003, right? This no, was this, was t this was this was five years of me doing it. This must've been 2008 or nine or something okay, like that. Okay, yeah, it's still okay. relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, for sure. And that play, I played the neighbor of someone as we were at an apartment, we're watching mm. the, the events unfold right. and her sister happens to be in the tower or was she okay? And yeah. it's just like a two hour look into that moment of time. Yeah. But this character was really funny, very quirky. It, it towed the line between serious and comedic. Right. And I and I remember I was kind of kneeling down telling this this end of the story. And I saw the person stand up and I was like, we're out of time. But I still took that one extra second. I'll never forget it my entire life. I stood up and mm -hmm. I got to see the entire audience. And it looked like some weird water coloring because it was just all these images and faces. And when I got to say, before I could finish the words, thank you, the place went ballistic. Just insane clapping. Right. Theater programs being, it was like <laughs> some sort of ridiculous thing. Yeah. And whether I knew if I won or lost, it was irrelevant. I felt so satisfied after all these years of training that we yeah. had a moment that meant something <clears throat> to someone else, which is the whole point of theater. And yeah. so it was pretty exciting. And then when we found out, they, uh, we ended up winning first place on that competition. We got to go to the Kennedy Center. We got to perform on the stage and I got a nice cash prize for best comedic scene of a, um, that was the one that we'd written. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And that money went straight to me coming to Japan. Oh, hell so, yeah. yeah. Did, did you end up winning in- uh, uh, We did not get the first place. Tragically, this is actually point of contention. This is really embarrassing. Drama. It is pretty, I mean, I don't hold them accountable, but it's really embarrassing that this happened. Yeah. During our second scene where the phone goes off, we had rigged it already so that someone would call. The stage manager for the Kennedy Center, who's not actually doing anything, they were just watching. Yeah. Their phone went off during our scene, like, like oh, audibly. Shit. And so I think I reached for the phone before the moment oh, no. and like, and it, Callie kind of 
rushed. Well, she didn't do anything wrong, but like she moved on to what I was doing. Yeah. And then we kind of like corrected it. And then it was like, wait, that wasn't. And then wait, my yeah. phone went off yeah. when it was supposed to. And you're like, and as a stage manager, you're kind of like, you really should have had that on. You're silent. the last guy on earth. Yeah. You yeah. really should not have that on. But you fucked up. Yep. So um, other than that, you know, I took those things that I learned and I taught drama in high schools here. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been in some various funny, different comedic things for Japanese media, working for NHK, similar to you did yeah. BBC. So it's always been a through line of like my, my life and my career was doing theater, all from those radio bastards who told me yeah, I was That was the origin well, story. Often, often a go. shit experience is a bigger motivator yeah. than a good one, I yeah. find. Yep. So yeah. there you go. For sure. I think your life is an anime. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. We're just, you, we're just going through all like the canon events in your life. I do have one, to the wiki. one yeah. brief one that sucked really bad when I told okay. you failure. It's a quick one. Uh, there was ESPN as a pretty big sports <laughs> network. Know, you told me this yeah. story. It's so this shit is such a funny fucking story. dumb. <laughs> and I was like, I, it was right after I'd been fired from the radio station. And yeah. I told, I was, they came to our town to, to interview anybody who, it was the first like reality TV show during like Survivor season one was still on, you know? Mm. Uh -huh. And it was dream job where <clears throat> you could win a, a job as a host for Sports Center for a year. Oh, and I wow. was like, dude, that's so sick. And my, my acting coach was like, yeah, go and fucking do it. What are they gonna do, Z95.7 you? And I was like, yeah, you're right, I can go and do it. So I wore like my nicest suit and I, I always looked kind of wild anyway with my messy hair and like, I always stuck out in a way. So we're, we're in line for those like 300 people and they have this camera crew coming along and they, they stopped at me and they said, hey, you look pretty interesting. What's your deal? And I was like, oh, I'm a, I'm a theater student at the university. And they're like, oh, whoa, got any theater you can show us? And I was like, never say no, never say no. Don't be afraid of failure. And I was like, yeah, I do, but it's not, it's a, it's a really, uh, well, it, it's, a, um, it's a serious piece. So like, go ahead and show it. It was like really serious. It was like my dad like abused me and now I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so uh, this is was, a sports center. Yeah, so I was like, but I, I, I did the monologue as best as I could. And I remember, uh, I remember one of the lines in the, the, the monologue is, is what the hell do you think you're doing? Is one of the lines. Yeah. yeah. And I remember it was a camera like that with like this enormous camera. Yeah. And yeah. I could, as I'm doing the monologue, I see like the cameraman look like, should we just cut this guy? What's going on? <laughs> and I, you know, worst modeling, I was like, what the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> and, I, and they were like dead silent, not the eruption that we got years later. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they, they were like, thank you so much for your, your monologue. That was really good. Good luck inside. I was like, thank you. And then the guy next to me, I was like, that did not feel good. He was like, it's not good. Better you than me. And I was like, okay. And then I, I was like, I didn't get invited to Bristol, Connecticut. I did not get invited to be a part of Sports Center. So I felt like, Damn. okay, at least I can live with the fact that I tried. I turn on the the first episode <laughs> and they're like, Welcome to ESPN, you know, dream job. Thousands applied. And it shows all these people who are being oh, oh, no. And they said, let's take a look at the people who didn't make the cut. And I was like, please don't do this. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> please don't do this. And it has like all these different people. And then one person does like a shitty job. And then right after it, it zooms in on my fat face going, where the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> and then I was, and then I got like 10 phone calls. I saw you on sports. And I was like, oh my God. So somewhere around there in some dark, dank closet, there's a, there's a tape of me, a full video Damn. of that horrible model. We'll never get it. Lost we'll media. Lost, lost media. media. Thank God. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's <laughs> when you take willing to fail too far. At, at least when you were asked, you didn't do the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was, I, when I'm you said it was a dog, I was like, it's kind of a serious like, where, where yeah. 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 Can, I, can I use you for like one yeah, second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, so. My dad abused me while auditioning for Sports Center. <laughs> it's not the play I imagine. <laughs> I, mean, I, I should have just improvised anything other than Literally that. Literally anything. Literally anything. Oh, that was, uh, that was a risky move, you know, let's see if it pans out. You live and learn, so. But Ooh, these man. stories in the moment, they felt fucking horrible. But mm. when you look back on them now- you That's a great story. Yeah, that's human a learning, yeah. learning experience and also yeah. great stories. You have stories. to accept your, the, the dumber aspects of one's life, I think, yeah. 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 Everyone are, are very satisfying. Stories <laughs> yeah. about them, so Absolutely. You know, yeah, this is completely all right. Yep. Holy shit. Some yeah. wins and some losses. I 
Yeah, I I booked at McDonald's. <laughs> time. That was just one I, big loss. I yeah, didn't even get that job. <laughs> oh, that's right. You yeah. applied and you got turned down yeah. by McDonald's. And my dad thought I was going to be unemployed for the rest of my life. And here you are. And, and he was yeah, right. kind of right. Yeah, he's kind of <laughs> especially right. Yeah, yeah. right. He's going to say, nailed it. So. Nailed it. Yep. But uh, yeah, thanks I'll, for coming out, Pete. Yeah, no, how long it's my pleasure. It's two hours. All right. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for coming out, Pete. It's yeah. honestly always, always, always great pleasure. having you on. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for gracing us again with your many stories. Godlike stories. And uh, now <laughs> we know you are definitely one of us with your very Fresh taste. bad opinions <laughs> on fucking And you know movies. what happened to Harambe now? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I learned a lot today. It's all good. So. Hey, look at all these patrons, though. Oh, they look at them. Yeah. So oh, wow. Yeah. That's my favorite oh, right Oh, that's there. a good one. That's, that's a good one. That's a good choice. Coney 2012. I'm joking. You can cut that one. You can cut that one. Like, no, we'll uh, keep it in. Look at that. There's a lot there. Someone is going to change their name to that. <laughs> hey, if you'd like to support the show, then go up to our Patreon, patreon.com slash trash taste. Also, follow us on Twitter. Send us some memes on the subreddit. If you had our face, listen to us on Spotify. And of course, go check out Pete's stuff. Links in the description. You, I, I don't have to tell you to do that. Yeah. Go do that right now. Go check it out his streams now. Yeah. He's sure. also, uh, you're on YouTube now. You've learned yeah. more on YouTube. I have. So go uh, check th it out. Thank yeah. you so much, guys. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. That was a fun one. Hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. yeah, hell yeah. Always a fun one. one.